What is going on, everybody? It is episode 479 of Pop Culture Crisis. My name is Brett, and I am here with my co-host, who is back. Yes. Would you introduce yourself, please? Hi, Crisis Actors. It's Mary. I am back from Santa Barbara once again. Uh, happy to be back. I hope you're happy to see me. It was an interesting time. Very nice weather. Very uh, weird people. <laughs> it's always to weird say people. the least. It's California. Yeah. 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 <laughs> was that, what was the weirdest part about it? Um, I mean, outside of doing the show, which was fine, um, there were some homeless people accosting me on the streets. You mean un, uh, unhomed? <clears throat> Sorry, unhoused. Unhoused. People <clears throat> that, yeah, accosted me on the street. And that wasn't very pleasant. Luckily, that doesn't happen. Or actually, that's not even that sort of true. Like yesterday, we we did like a whole thing on here where I was talking about how I'd rather give money to homeless people than give it to like than when you know. Well, you know, like when you go to the grocery store and it asks you to round up. Well, yeah. You know what I mean, right? So I was like, look, I, I have no problem. I don't think you can money. trust either. I don't care about <laughs> trusting them. I, I I know full well they're going to use the money for something that is probably not good for them. That doesn't really. Well, then I, why do you I, give them money then? I, I don't. I just, I have no problem giving the, because I'm not judging them for their we behavior. We got a hundred dollar oh. super chat from Micah Hegland. Crisis Pantry. I like turtles. Well, okay then. Well, thank you for the big super chat. Thank you chat. for that. And See, for the, the party. They're very happy you're back. That's Sorry for the pantry. Yeah. I mean, not party. They're very happy you're back. Yeah. Yes, they're very Thank happy you. you're back. Uh, yeah, like, well, look, like, no, the point I was making is, like, I, I do also like when they make the signs that are honest. It's like, I'm going to use this for, for alcohol. I've never I, seen that. I, I have seen that. But I, I just, I don't, I don't mind knowing that likely there's a possibility, right, <clears throat> that they might not use it for something um, like lodging or their family as they say but you know what i'd rather give it to that person than give it to some corporation so they can spend it on some bougie retreat where nothing gets solved or done i mean you don't have to no. give your money to either party. and I, I i don't carry cash all that much so it doesn't come up a lot but it does happen i actually happen. never do which is probably a bad idea we got a 20 dollars one from shane h wilder I want to commend Mary on her whatever appearances. It's nice to see someone strong in their faith and morals and the charity you showed to the others, even if they weren't up to hearing it, was heartwarming. Peace be with you. What was the charity that you showed to them? Like, what you saying, I like, wasn't what? giving them money, if that's what you no, mean. No, I'm saying, like, what, do they, what do they mean by that? Like, <clears throat> like, what, like uh, the grace you were showing them? Um, honestly, if they saw this comment, they would object to it heavily because they felt very threatened every time that I question them. And it's just like humans in general, when someone says that they are happy with the decision they've made, we don't always take them at their word. If you are wasting away in a crack den and telling everyone F off, I'm happy where I am in life, mm -hmm. we don't just take you at your word. We don't just believe people when they say things. Yeah. We're not I'm gullible idiots. <laughs> it's it's a fair thing to point out like even even at my worst when my when my addiction was at its worst I was never like tricking myself into thinking that I was happy the idea was that I just accepted that that was what my life was, but I wasn't trying to pretend to other people that I had it figured out when I very clearly didn't yeah, that's a big difference between you and the people that I Though, was on the panel with. To be fair, not to that's like what I'm I'm not what I'm not saying is I'm not saying that what they're doing is akin to what I was doing. That's that's not what I'm saying. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying, I think it's similarly that you know they're unhealthy. making choices that damage themselves. To to each their own, and hopefully the the idea I always take in these types of situations is like you're not going to necessarily reach them right now, but. Hopefully, maybe, you know, assuming that they want to change their lives, if they do, that 20 years down the line, five years down the line, two weeks down the line, maybe those words resonate with them when something else happens in their life and they come back to it. Yeah. Right? That's, maybe. That's, that's how I've always looked those ty at those types of things. That You're not looking to change their life right then and there because most people don't react that well to being challenged or questioned the idea is that in a time when their mood or their situation is more neutral or actions that are going on outside of what you shared with them cause them to reevaluate their life then maybe your wo your words would hold more weight mm -hmm. yeah um i don't know if any of it 
is going to mean anything to them, but I mean, for each one of them, there's hundreds of people watching, so. Thank you. What is this about Harambe? What the? Yes, did you make new. this? Yes, I did. Uh, that's uh, Ian. See, this is what we get when we don't have a Nightcore crisis party. Yeah. Seriously? Well, that's, look, it was Ian doing his best Roberto Jr. impersonation. And frankly, I find that just a little bit beautiful. I know I Carter isn't watching right now, but get this message to Carter. We need the Nightcore Crisis Party. I love the one we got, guys. I'm happy to do the Nightcore one as well, but I, I have I no idea this. what I just listened to. <laughs> what was that? Like, guys, I literally don't know what that was. That was a Crisis Party mixed with uh, Roberto Jr. being ch channeled through Ian screaming. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, it's that, great. It's fantastic. It wasn't. I love it. Guys, we got a bunch of stuff to get into today. Number one is that the is the fact that Jada Pinkett Smith's new book has in fact plummeted. It is no longer even in the top fifty books being sold right now. It's not on the bestsellers list. Meanwhile, Britney Spears' book is uh, rocketing up the charts. So we're going to discuss that because. It feels like I was just watch just the other day I was watching everyone talk about Jada Pinkett Smith for hours at a time, but it seems like people are more than happy to talk about her, read articles about her, but I guess people aren't willing to kind of pay for that barrier to entry to, to actually go and read the book. So we're going to discuss that. We're going to talk about the fact that Rachel Zegler, who has been on a, a new list uh, put together by the rap celebrating uh, Latino power. In the Hollywood. Successful Latinos in Hollywood. Uh, she's got some more comments to say about how she feels as if people have uh, come out against her because she has the bravery to speak out. So we're going to discuss that and her complete inability to appear anything other than awful in her in her demeanor. It's it's kind of shocking, actually. So we're going to talk about that. We're also going to talk about Rick Reardon, the creator of Percy Jackson, who is fighting racist trolls who have got problems with the casting in the new Disney Plus Percy Jackson series. He's got a, there's an old letter, uh, uh, like, uh, like a letter from his uh, website that we're going to tie into it because it's very interesting to talk about how casting through a company being involved in this process, how you have to kind of uh, convey yourself to the public when you're not only making something that you created, but you're also having it being funded by a company like Disney. So we're gonna discuss that. Also, <sighs> Lil RT, right? There is a child rapper who goes by Lil RT. He's nine years old, and it looks like he has a demonic stage mom behind this whole operation. He put out this shocking video of him rapping about committing crimes and sex acts and things like this that he hopefully doesn't understand at his age. And we're going to talk about him and some other child rappers and child influencers. Yeah, I think it's worth getting into because we brought up some other ones uh, when we were talking off air, all of that stuff. So we're going to get into all that. But before we get started, guys, would you hit the like button on this video? And would you subscribe to this channel if you have not done so already? We are getting closer every day to 75,000 subscribers. So thank you very much. Turn the notification bell on. Share this video with your friends so other people can come in here and hang out. Remember that all Super Chats, $20 and over, we will stop the discussion. Discussion. We will read them right then and there, and then we will do our very best to get back on, on topic the best that we can, though I don't always do that perfectly. I swear I try, I try my best. So, Mary, if you are ready, we can just go ahead and get right into it. Are you ready? I'm ready. She's ready, ladies and gentlemen. All right, guys, a couple of announcements first. So if you remember, not that long ago, a little bit over a year ago, I guess that is a long time ago, uh, we, reviewed, like a long time ago. we reviewed a movie called Samaritan, which I actually quite enjoyed, and Mary didn't even hate, uh, which is shocking. I mean, she, I didn't like it either. I she, wouldn't ever rewatch it. I remember almost nothing about Samaritan. Other than the fact that you didn't hate it. Um, other than the fact that everyone in the in the movie had flip phones. That was the best part. But the year of yeah. the, when it took place was never articulated. Yeah, well, that was the, that we was. We got a twenty dollar one from Mikey. The most interesting thing about Jada is that she was slash is married to Will Smith. Question yeah, mark. It is. I mean, that is probably the most interesting. They are still thing about married her. technically. Yes. Yeah. 
technically. Probably the most interesting thing about her and why she holds on to it so much. So, yeah. So they're working on a sequel, which I think is kind of cool because I enjoyed it. And we've been talking recently about why superhero movies and franchises have been kind of uh, fizzling out and people haven't been that interested. I like the idea. Anytime we can get something that isn't based off a prior IP, I'm okay with that. That is doesn't Sylvester bother me. Is Sylvester Stallone really at his age in the right shape? Yes. No, he is. He to is, continue this. He is in better shape than 90% of people these well, days. I was, when I was watching Samaritan, I could barely understand him. He, I mean, and that's not how always, he always sounded. He's always, that is not how not he always as sounded. Ba- not as bad, but he, he is, did he, not sound that bad. The point is, like, in the character, he's supposed to sound tired and, and forlorn and worn out. I right. guess so. So I was, no, but like, He's I was always watching, like all constantly on the verge of having a heart attack, yeah. literally. But the thing is, is like, look, if you go and watch, um, if you go and watch Tulsa King, he's in phenomenal shape, not just for his age, but in general. I didn't care for Tulsa yeah. King, that's for sure. Quite Blackpilled says, Mary, as an advocate for bullying, why is it that whenever you leave the bullying on this show, uh, the bullying on this show gets ramped up to 11? Brent went through it on Monday, and the spirit of bullying hit the like button, or you're ugly. In, in the what spirit happened? Of bull- uh, they Monday. were uh, they were very they were making fun of me because I'm not married and with three kids yet. So that's what they were. Well, until everyone figures out their shit, yeah. then let's not even go there. <laughs> that's what I'll say. But I would not stand for that if I were around. It uh, look, it's it, it didn't bother me. It was fu- it was funny to watch because me and Dane are that way off camera, anyways. Me and Dane will That's guy hurl stuff. stuff back and forth. Uh, yeah, it is. It, it is what it is. It's fine. But they. <laughs> but it's not just that. The chat <laughs> loves to bully me by not spelling my name correctly. Anyways, was that happening on Monday too? Oh, oh that happens every day. That yeah. happens every day. They don't like to. Doesn't they don't like change. spell my name right. So it says a sequel to last year's superhero movie Samaritan is now in the works at Amazon and MGM Studios. The first outing introduced action icon Sylvester Stone as the title character, and basically the idea is that they have uh, agreed to pick it up after the strike finally gets resolved. So it'll probably be a couple years. So before never. We... I I'm literally the Ryan Long video where he's saying that he's the real victim of Israel Palestine. <laughs> I'm like I'm the real victim of the SAG strike at this point. We need content, folks. Yep. This is a pop culture podcast. We need pop culture content to finally come back. They need I thought I wanted this stuff. strike to go on forever just for them to suffer. But now I'm suffering for it. Yeah. And I want them to just relent already. Yeah. I don't know if that's going to happen anytime soon. Mm. All of the headlines sound the same. Yeah, it's... Uh, it's, it's... I... You'd think they'd be doing more interviews about other stuff. Like, sure, they can't talk about the movies that they're in, but they can still talk about all sorts of stupid stuff. Usually the interviews that these actors do are 90% them bloviating about their personal life and about their families and about their political views. And then the, the smaller portion that is left behind after that is them talking about the movie they're in or the show they're in. Yeah. So why are they boycotting the whole thing? At this point, because they because the they, they point, want to talk about themselves. What's the, the issue? But they use the new media as the it's as always the, the cover for it. In. Yeah. So the idea is like, oh, Rachel Zegler is making this new making West Side Story. Sure, ninety percent of the interview is talking about her, but that's not that doesn't sell. You have to sell them by saying she's going to talk about this new movie. That Meanwhile, she's Gwyneth Paltrow just doesn't care because she's not acting anymore. So she uh, still did a feature interview with Bustle where they just dressed her up like a pinup harlot. Yep. Love it. So not only that, guys, speaking of Rachel Zegler, we got her on a couple fronts today. It looks like the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, the new movie from the Hunger Games franchise, is uh, going to make about $50 million to start. It comes out November 17th. They ended up not moving it. They, they were considering moving it off that time frame because of Dune, but then Dune moved, so they decided to leave it there instead. Yeah, I almost fell for the fake news headline that a man was suing Warner Brothers for emotional distress after the delay of Dune 2 because it was, quote, the only thing he was looking forward to this whole year. that year. Well, it's, uh, but yeah, but it's You're not... You're pushing people to the brink of sewer slide it's by not, delaying Dune 2. It's not too ridiculous of a concept considering the studio got sued that one time because Anna de Armas was in a trailer. That's valid. But not, but not in the movie. That's valid. That's yep. false advertising. Yep. 
So, I mean, I, did, I, I would have been none the wiser. Also, we should, it is fair to point out to these people that they, they, uh, they liken it to Planet of the Apes, Rise of the Planet of the Apes, which made $54.8 million in 2011, which would be way more money yeah. now. So your, your math is specious at best. I don't, I don't like it. It's you not could good. get a gallon of gas for a quarter in 2011. <laughs> Everything was basically free at that time. Yeah. Uh, we just walked on water. It was fantastic. <laughs> it, was, it was great. All right, guys. So I, I don't know if anybody. Are you? Are you? Did you like the Hunger Games movies? I have no idea. Uh, I don't remember them that well because I watched them in middle school. Yeah. But I read the books. I watched the movies. I liked them well enough for the time that they were in. Are you? Are you excited for this movie? I just think that the time for these adaptations has well passed and uh, the in the early 2010s we could do that with bu without a bunch of baggage attached the and that adult. time is over young adult adaptations i mean adaptations from ip of all sorts yeah. it's all crap now and before 2015 you could do that with a shelf life that was not nearly as bad this is not gonna you know, preserve itself in, in time. This is not going to be remembered. All right. Uh, oh, yes. You showed me this photo. Addison Ray. Yeah. Miss Addison Ray was uh, captured by through... paparazzi pretending apparently to read Britney's memoir I for like, like the... two seconds. Opened up in the, the very middle of the book, which is how you know that she is not reading it. The spine hasn't even been cracked all that much. She's no, yeah. completely new looking book with her phone in her hands. She's barely holding on to that can of seltzer right there. Um, and then she immediately closed the book after these shots were taken and Moved used on. it to shield herself from the sun. <laughs> hey Addison, how's it going today? Good to see you. She had that ready yeah. though. Are you reading the Britney's book? She's like, oh, is the cover facing out? Yes, yeah. the cover's facing yeah. out. This yeah. Is, uh, you guys should go buy it. That's the Britney to... How do you feel about music? her throwing the knives, the fake knives? <laughs> knives? The knives. knives. Hey, Addison, are you doing the music? Or are you doing the knives? Uh, oh. <laughs> How's Omer doing? We haven't seen Omer in a while. She's trying to learn from the experts because um, Addison Rae is trying to launch her own pop yeah. career right now, and I thought that her song was very mediocre. Well, it's a pop song. So Aggressively it's be... mediocre. It was literally like the parody that Lily Rose Depp made for The Idol, but worse. <laughs> and then I noticed that under there... Uh, uh, there's the picture of her Grimes. ass is not reading <laughs> Grimes reading Marx, but okay. Grimes reading Marx is more believable than Addison Ray reading, reading it all. Britney Spears yeah. or reading it all. Yeah. Yes. I do believe Grimes is a genuine Marxist. <laughs> Somebody says, who is Addison Ray? How would you describe Addison Ray to the public? She started off as like one of the TikTokers that would do the viral TikTok dances yeah. and she was sort of part of that hype house click. Went on from there. I mean, she's trying to be a singer now. I don't really know what her deal is. She's going to be in the Thanksgiving film that's coming out, the yeah. slasher film. It's literally called Thanksgiving. She plays the, the hot best friend. Yeah, in the chat, Andrina says, Grimes did that for the photo. Yeah, but it is still more believable that she would actually read this book. Though I think she'd get book on tape. Like, you shouldn't be a Marxist, but... If you're going to read Marx in front of the public, at least actually be reading it. It'd be way more, so she's saying it'd be more based if it was like she didn't have the visible cover and somebody had to like zoom in really far to read it on the spine. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's better. All right, guys. Oh, Mary once had to explain to me who this person was. I had no idea who Trisha Paytas well, was. Well, you know now, right? Yes. No, I know, I know Paytas. now. I, would, I wouldn't have picked this topic yeah. if I hadn't seen this and known who she was. <laughs> Trisha Paytas is a YouTuber. She's one of the OGs on YouTube. She's been around for eons and has gone through many evolutions. She's in trouble. And she just can't seem to ever not be canceled. Mm-hmm. And it's really not fair sometimes. She's now getting backlash for dressing up as Ice Spice because people think it's racist. Yep. And Ice Spice is like probably just as white as Trisha Paytas is. It says, yeah. <laughs> if you went and looked at the numbers, let's pull the 23andMe up right now. Because like, I bet you 
their numbers are similar. At first, Trish was besieged with comments claiming that the costume was racist, with some viewers even accusing her of blackface. Wait, does that mean that if you go as the Little Mermaid this year, are you putting on blackface? Well, I guess only if you add the blackface to it, right? I guess. Uh, <laughs> um, but she has a spray tan. She always has had a spray tan. Yeah. That, But that makes her more tan than Ice Spice is without a tan. Yeah. Ice Spice is extremely pale. It says white person to white person, Trisha. You can't be doing this, they said. She didn't. Ugh, people are so preachy. Like, get yeah. over yourselves. It's, uh, but the thing is, is it's effective. It's like the idea that when you're when you're online, there's a certain amount of like you'll have more power um, finding the people who are easily swayed by random people's opinions than you'll ever have in your real life. I thought that everything going on in Israel right now would have distracted these weirdos for a while, but they still flock to the influencers. I think they find I think they find time for both. Ugh. I think that like whoever said that had like a, an Israel Palestine tab open next to it and then sent this after the fact. Holly Bailey should dress up as whiteface Ariel for Halloween. <laughs> That's a, just put, to just to keep everyone on their toes. Everyone can switch off. They yeah. can switch off. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, Black China. We've talked about Black China here before. Black China, who removed her cheek fillers. She has. She found God, right? She found God this past year. Mm -hmm. and she removed her fillers. Her she's dissolved everything that's in her face. Got her liposuction. But she's still being and... accused of bad things because uh, another per another singer whose name is, uh, what was it? Uh, uh, Liana Fisher is accusing her of witchcraft in, le in a legal battle over the song that she says that she stole the chorus for and then seems to outline all of the ways in which her life has fallen apart since the chorus got stolen for this song. So she was also, the, this other lady was a Playboy model. A uh, Playboy okay. model and singer named Liana Fisher filed a lawsuit I've never earlier heard of this her. year. Ne neither had I. Uh, accusing Black China of, uh, of taking the chorus for her song, Hate Me Too, without permission. Since then, Fisher, also, who is also an active Christian, has suffered horrendous bad luck with her lawsuit being dismissed uh, and eviction from her rental home in Los Angeles. This is something that's, uh, is this a very, I hate to be sexist here, is this? something that is very a female thing to do to blame like bad luck and and another she's saying that she's getting nightmares and yeah. that's evidence of black china cursing cursing her. her so this is this is the other end of the spectrum on the crystal chick you did don't she meet. think that saying that would add to her credibility i guess not i guess so this is a, this is a, she's representing herself in court well that was the first mistake you made was representing yourself in court uh she's appealing the dismissal and says uh i haven't not, listened to the songs i don't know not only she was not only was she made to be homeless but she says her daughter mariella was also thrown out of her apartment i guess that's also that's um, how, black that's china's black fault. china's fault okay yes, it is. i have not listened to a single black china song in my life yeah have you uh can't I, name a single one i wouldn't be able to name a single one but i'm sure i've heard one uh, she says this year has been pr this is the Liana. She says this year has been pretty rough. I'm a Christian and both my pastor and I are fighting really hard because it appears that I have been spiritually attacked along with my daughter since January 23, which is when the lawsuit started gaining momentum. I have good reason and I'm going to sound crazy, but I wouldn't put it past that woman to be involved in some religious cult or Illuminati. Uh, so uh, maybe, her and Katy Perry both. Maybe she's saying like maybe she doesn't know about Black China's convert. The fact that she converted. That would take very little research. Yeah. Uh, she says, I feel uh, bad for this woman. Yeah, in a way. She's clearly off her rocker. She says, uh, oh, no, because she says, I wouldn't put it past this woman to be involved in some religious cult or Illuminati, and this born-again Christian-ish uh, uh, is that she's trying to pull is some sort of cover-up. So here's what it is. Black China has actually been initiated into the Illuminati, and she's using born-again Christian. Maybe her and Kat Von D have both been sworn into the Illuminati, it's and they're using their... It's a little bit far-fetched. And they're using their Christianity, their newfound Christianity, as a way to cover up for the fact that they're all now... Uh, Alistair Crowley disciples. See, if people treated Christians in the public eye well, that would be believable, but they've not gotten 
anything but hate. She backlash. says I sh- she says I've been having nightmares, which is also a symptom of spiritual attack. Well, I've been I've had nightmares in my lifetime too, and usually it's a sign of being stressed in my life. So maybe it's the fact that you're stressed because you're filing a lawsuit and you're having trouble finding a place to live. Those are more valid uh, reasons to be having nightmares than believing that some other lady put a hex on you. I'm just saying. Nobody holds it against Taylor Swift that she, um, or at least her music label sued Olivia Rodrigo Mm. for the same thing, for copyright infringement from her own album. Because she's a boss. Mary. And now Olivia Rodrigo gets hate every time that she decides not to literally worship at Taylor Swift's feet. Yeah. Yep. F- like for creating her entire career. Now she just wants to act like she doesn't exist anymore. She says that her pastor has given me has given her exorcisms, holy oil, prayer rituals, all Christian based. A pastor is not gonna do the trick, lady. <laughs> she's Sorry have, to tell you, she's you have to, to go to a Vatican. Catholic church. And it doesn't need to be the Vatican. Contact a Catholic priest. That's uh, the only way that you're going to get answers to your questions. So the, is the idea that if she went to like a, a more dominant authority on the issue, they'd be like, sorry, this doesn't rise to the level of requiring an exorcism? I mean, what they would do is like <laughs> say, maybe you should go to therapy or something before you decide that this is Black China summoning demons on you lady like that's probably the common sense explanation that they would come up with i like it i like it mm. all right guys <laughs> i just i'm just picturing the lawyer like the the judge in court he's like what witchcraft huh can you sue someone for cursing you i have no idea let's make that a thing let's watch britney spears we didn't show this the other day yeah. but yes she did in fact audition for the notebook she didn't do badly, but it's giving Degrassi. Okay. <laughs> that I wasn't gonna stay, but nobody has Oh, the me. audio's kind of bad. Well, it's an old video. Yeah. Let's see if we can find... Uh... No, the others are just pictures. Just pictures. Uh, could you hear it? Yeah. Okay, it's only... It's that in I my deaf... I gotta oh, turn my oh. headphones around. Look, no one... I can't be here. Not the way I feel about you. It's not fair to Lon. No, you can't. Chat's right. It's not good, but it's not bad. I said it's Degrassi. It's yeah. giving more like teen drama vibes than yeah. an adult rom com. Well, it's also like but you're, it's just you're, it's not bad. You're in an audition with a static camera angle where it's very hard to actually like once you like they would have pulled it together in the yes, end if she been, got the role. It would have been fixed in the editing bay by the time they were done. That's what would have ended up happening. There. I just never understood the huge obsession with the Notebook. Or, like I watched it one time and I was like, all right. Yeah. Like, why do people cry at it? I don't, I think I saw The Notebook with a, a girl I was dating. I did get dra- uh, dragged. 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 You got dragged. I did get dragged to Safe Haven or something with like Josh Dumel um, mm. and what's her name? Um, not Catherine McPhee. The lady from State of Affairs. Oh, and, I don't remember. But yeah, like I got dragged to that one and was like, can I can I get out of here, please? <laughs> you left early? Uh, no, no, I, I stayed. But oh, okay. <laughs> I, I, I did not want to be there. Yeah. So. All right. Let's uh, let's go. What would you like to do? Cute or cringe of the day? Um, up to you. Okay. All right. We'll do cringe first. I do prefer to do cringe first. It's just easier to then okay. palate cleanse after the fact. Uh, you submitted this one today. Uh, Pete Davidson might be an upgrade. I don't know, it okay, says. Just for context, this is Madeline Klein, who was in Glass Onion um, playing Whiskey. She started dating Pete Davidson. I guess they're not together anymore. And this is but her. But this is her with her ex boyfriend from before she met Pete Davidson. And. Uh... Are you crying? 
Well, you know, good for him. I'm sure he was uh, he was very emotional. That's that's good for him. <sighs> Bro. <I> <laughs> was there that? was actually a Justin Bieber video that I sent yeah. you for cringe as well. Uh, we'll do that tomorrow. Yeah, we'll, we'll save, save that, that for tomorrow. For tomorrow. <laughs> Especially now that I'm bitter that he got, he's just going to get us, uh, we're going to have to freaking copyright strike that crap. Why is he crying? Yeah, why does he have to cry? All right, we got cute of the day, ladies and gentlemen. First from Corey Robinson. Robbins, not Robinson. Corey Robbins, first ambassador to the moon. It's quite a position to be in. Uh, this is a stray that lives near a grocery store I live near. What? I call her <laughs> Sasha and I buy her treats. Sorry about the pick. She is skittish. You've also been seeing foxes around. Yes. Oh, in yeah. In just suburban areas i was i was skating um i was skating at like a like one of those it's always these office parks right it's always like medical supply companies and like dialysis companies uh and diagnostic test testing facilities it's They're weird all, it's all these medical parks there's this and there was just two foxes who just were just walking around just on the street there's this shipment facility of some kind near me that there's just never anyone there there's, I've never seen anyone walking around there, never any cars parked anywhere. It's yeah. just empty. All empty. the time. Empty. It's weird. Those are my those favorite. Those are the back rooms. Those are my favorite places because you can skate at those places and a lot of times then you don't get kicked out. <laughs> yeah. I love those places. All right, let's do two more. This one here is from Mesha Milby. <laughs> my sweet Lilu passed away this week. Uh, we're very sorry to hear that. But that is an adorable photo. Thank you for the Halloween themed yes. cat that picture. Yes, that is very cute. But uh, I love that. R.I.P. And we'll do one more here. This is from Peter Leo on Twitter. Says uh, Casimir pre uh, presented without comment. I didn't know cats liked tennis balls. I thought that was a dog thing. That's a big yawn. It's very cute. Very cute. All right, let's go ahead and uh, let's get started then, shall we? So not that long ago, just a couple weeks ago, there was all this news going around about Jada Pinkett Smith. Is she with Will Smith? Is she not Will Smith? Turns out they had been broken up for seven years. All of it, of course, in service to what Hollywood is always in service to, money. Because she had a brand new memoir coming out and she wanted to stoke the flames of intrigue to get people all excited for this book. The problem is, ladies and gentlemen, people just aren't that interested. Well, I mean, people wanted to read the headlines yeah. on Twitter and talk about the headlines. That doesn't necessarily mean they're willing to spend their money to read your drivel in full. <laughs> I watched a, a, a stand up. I have no idea who this was. Somebody might have sent this to me last night. He goes, he's like, Jada Pinkett Smith. He's like, I have never Googled <laughs> Jada Pinkett Smith in my entire life. I don't think anyone has ever Googled Jada Pinkett Smith. Who has in their interest life. in her he goes, outside of her connection to Will Smith? He, he goes, So why the hell do I know so much about yeah, her? Because she can't stop blabbing and trauma dumping to the world about her horrible marriage. Well, the problem here, ladies and gentlemen, is her book uh, is no longer even in the top 50 books right in, pu in print right now. Maybe one of the mistakes she made is going on such an extensive press tour with all these video interviews where she was trying to make it more yeah. and more punchy and salacious every time. And... I mean, you couldn't scroll through the timeline without another Jada Pinkett Smith says dot, dot, dot. And it's just some more insane thing that she said about Will and how the failure of their marriage is his fault and degrading him as a man and emasculating yeah. him. And I don't know if anyone is really interested in that. And then on the other hand, Britney Spears has this memoir that is finally like breaking a silence that she's had for like a decade about her personal life. Her and, Je her and Justin People Timberlake are genuinely is interested in it. And even then, Brittany isn't doing interviews about it. She's just letting it speak for itself. She's but not doing any press for it. And then there's a lot of interesting stuff that the public isn't going to know about from the memoir because the only headlines that are going to come out are the ones related to other celebrities. So they're talking about Justin Timberlake, obviously. They're talking about Christina Aguilera and Madonna. all these other people she knew. Yeah. 
So it says the 52-year-old actress recent, uh, released the book on October 17th, and it managed to nab the number three spot on Amazon's charts for the week of October 22nd, which lists the top 20 most sold and most read books of the week. She finished just behind Britney Spears' even buzzier memoir, The Woman and Me, and David Grand's Killers of the Flower Mood, which of course is being propelled right now because of the release of the movie. But on Amazon's main bestsellers list, uh, Worthy plummeted to just uh, to number 81 as of Tuesday. Yeah, I actually was um, talking to my hairdresser about this. Uh, well, he brought it up because he was like, what is going on with Jada Pinkett Smith in her marriage? It's just insane because she wants to be the alpha male. And I was like, you're absolutely right. She wants to be the alpha in her relationship and have control of everything yeah. and set the terms of everything. And Will will just do anything seemingly to appease her it doesn't matter he's always he said i'm always going to be her friend i'm always going to stand by her he's like a friend zoned husband what's more pathetic than that yeah. getting friend zoned by your own wife and uh i mean i still think it has a lot to do with his upbringing and the fact that he's kind of holding on to the idea that he can keep that family together no matter what what does it have to do with his upbringing uh that he had a rough childhood and he always said that he just it, like he dreamed of having the perfect family and like he's did kind jada of, uh I, I don't know if she's has that clearly wish, something went she wrong along that, the way she doesn't have that same wish so, um <laughs> i mean she what were her reasons for marrying will smith if she seems to not really even like well, him she didn't seem to want to, to marry him as, as like she acts like her. she was coerced into it and yeah. i guess she is it true that she conceived um jaden before they were married i don't know and maybe like back in that's, the day yeah, that, that would have been, been they were married for like what 17 years or something like that so that's and that's, he's obviously yeah, older than that older, so yeah. i mean maybe back in that time even though it wasn't actually that long ago there would have been some social pressure to marry after having a kid yeah that but was there's also like look, a factor he, he was a big deal at the time so there was a lot of um there was a lot of status to be gained and she by was not him. Not, not on his not level. Not nearly no. the no, same. No, not even close. Uh, he was the biggest actor in the world at that time. Like, who or where would she be in life had she not married him? Would she, any of us have even heard of her? I would have heard of her, but she, I wouldn't. Like, 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 okay, so for instance, I, there were years where I knew who she was and did not know that she would been married to Will Smith. That I was also the thing. Um, recently saw a post that said Kanye was able to find another Kim, but Kim wasn't able to find another Kanye. Maybe she's not. You can learn Kanye. lessons from this, and it's like, well, I mean, that really just make, makes Kanye seem he, like he's still latching on and obsessed yeah. and not over his wife, and that Kim doesn't care to find another Kanye in her life. She's probably. I mean, to be honest, she probably doesn't because I don't think she really cares about ending up with any, any guy, anybody yeah. but herself, yeah. and, and maybe her kids. Yep. But if you look at what's going on with Britney Spears right now, it says, uh, according to her at least, her, her words, uh, it is the highest selling a celebrity memoir in history in just the first day of its release. Now that sounds like BS hmm. to me. I don't know for sure, but it sounds like The press. Jeanette McCurdy one yeah. had a lot of attention at the time. It did not have this level uh, But of not that level, yeah. yeah. It says in an Instagram post on Tuesday, the same uh, the same day Woman in Me was released, she took a moment to boast about the book sales, uh, uh, saying that it was uh, on, that she was able to release all this stuff on her terms at last. And according to her, the highest selling celebrity memoir in history on its first day on the shelves. And she says, and it's only day number one. Yeah, I saw, um, I was at the store the other day and I saw like the section where this book was was almost empty mm. so okay. people are oh uh, there's a 20 dollars one here from nate says i think brett is 100 percent correct in this i see will as a victim entirely i think uh i think shaming him through this is a good example of why men don't seek help i understand he keeps letting her walk on him but i think he's a victim uh at the end of the day, it's still his job to figure it out. And oh uh, I, how many times can you go through this? It's your family. It's your yeah. marriage. Act but or continue being passive. Choose your fate wisely. Yeah. You know, uh, and he's chosen his fate. 
Be careful who you marry, right? Be careful who I you mean, marry. I mean, yeah. There's yeah. a $20 one here from Ryan the Eating Warrior, Warrior says, can't help but feel bad for Will Smith. I understand they want to have a good family and stay together, but at some point you got to cut your losses. Take it from a divorced guy with a cheating ex-wife. His kids are grown as well. I feel more, like more than anything, I feel bad for the kids who were forced to look at this relationship as if it was some type of normal human interaction, which will then inform all of their relationships going forward. Yeah, they have no male or female role model because the their mom is acting like the man in the house. Yep. She's wearing the pants in the relationship and their father is getting walked all over. Yeah, like I, I don't know if I would call Will Smith a victim. I would call him, no, I I would call him so. somebody who's being... Uh, who could pull himself out of this if he wanted to, but it's just worn down and, and has made a and made and has made his value judgments about what matters. Look, also the other thing to take in uh, to account in all of these situations is stories like this are deeply personal, have a lot to do with things that we'll never know all of the information on. So all the speculation in the world won't actually paint you an accurate picture of what's going on. We Jada can talk about is not an Amber Heard. No. I think you can pretty easily distinguish a Jada from an Amber Heard because you can see that Amber Heard uses this um, this persona that's like this abused, lost, uh, helpless waif, but then she turns on yeah. you and turns into the witch and she's aggressive and she yells and she hits and stuff like this. Um, Jada is just cold. Yeah, Jada has like... You you look into her eyes and you don't see compassion in her eyes. She can't even fake that. Nope. Amber Heard is a good fake. Jada just doesn't seem to be able to pretend to have feelings at all. Yeah. <laughs> Jada completely is, has worn down Will over the years, and Amber Heard is more explosive. And it might actually be true that the reason Britney Spears' book would do better is that like she just seems like a warmer, more interesting person to read about who's flawed and had a lot of things and had a lot of awful things happen to her, but that's a more enticing story than I am an evil woman, hear yeah. me roar, buy my book. Yeah, exactly. Like you feel better about giving money to Britney Spears than you do about giving money to Jada because everyone is thinking, what, where was Britney all these years? What was she doing all these years? They were curious about her. No one was thinking about Jada. Yeah. It's a, it's a scary thing to think about that there are, I wonder how many women in the world actually look at a Jada Pinkett Smith and are like, I'm going to model my home life after that. Does she have... Fans? Fans? I have no idea. <laughs> That's just no, such a bizarre idea to me. It's crazy because they, they do technically. I Like if you go to any of these celebrities, even the most unliked celebrity, if you go to their Instagram pages, there's comments in there from people who are like, oh, I can't wait to buy your there's book. There's always somebody, Yeah, I like, there, There's always Somebody be... to buy your book out there, no who matter are, who you are. <laughs> they're just not as many as Britney Spears, right? Yeah, I mean, Britney's memoir might not even be majority written by her. Yeah, I, I'm still weirded out by the fact that they were like celebrating the fact that her manager was like pushing her to finish it when so much of the book was about her being pushed to do things. She didn't yeah, want to do. like they're like she, they pushed her to do like, it. Let's even look though, into this manager guy. I, like, well, they said I guess they're best friends. So like okay. if that's if that's true, if I'll, so. I'll take you at your word. But the whole point is like the plenty of parts of that book were them talking about. Um, plenty of the stuff in that book was talking about she was being forced to do things by her dad that she really didn't want to do. And the co-conservators. And the co-conservators mm -hmm. and all that stuff. So yeah, it's it's not... Uh... No one's ever going to tell Brittany what to do again. No. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Uh, dark Opt. It just sounds like Ian getting tortured. Just sounds like Ian in extreme pain. Somebody says J uh, Jada never shit on the bed. She probably hired she hired someone else to do it. That's even scarier. <laughs> There's a $20 one here from Nate says, I disagree, Mary. I think you're reducing abuse to requiring a physical element. I think Jada is awful in exploiting a man who wants to hold his family together, like Brett said. I believe that she is awful and yes, um, exploiting Will's mental weakness 
yeah. against him. She's clearly the mentally stronger person in that relationship. Mm-hmm. I guess in a way, then yes. I'm just saying it does we're not. Make, we're not there. It does make him. Uh, if if we take all of that as fact, and we're and we assume that we and we pretend like we knew everything that happened behind the scenes, and we took all of that as fact, then yes, that would make Will Smith the victim. But also, I'm, like Johnny actually, Johnny Depp made claims against Amber Heard that she was abusive. Yeah. Will Smith has never done that. Yeah, but wouldn't that be like the craziest if like she's literally so good at controlling him that he can't even bring himself to make those claims because he's so emotionally tied to her. Well, and we'll they see have kids, if he does eventually. But also, but the, the, the point I make is like, Imagine yes. if Johnny Depp and Amber Heard had kids. Ugh. So That would have made the situation so much worse. Worse. The, the idea that like, look, yes, I do believe that you could consider Will Smith a victim here, but at the end of the day, you still have to be the one who pulls yourself out. He has to be the one who pulls himself out of it. And, and I would say that it. for all women yeah. in, in exactly. those situations as well, like that you always have a Agency. say in the way that people treat you. You always have the ability to set those terms in yeah. your relationships. I don't know. It's, I have a harder time with these types of stories because there's so much, like no matter how many stories come out, you could read What did every you think single... of Tyrese Gibson's ex-wife? She said that she regrets their divorce oh. and that her friends influenced her into initiating their divorce. It's, I mean, that's a common story we hear nowadays. I mean, it's a common story that we know happens. I don't think it's common for us to hear someone admit it out loud yeah. to themselves or others that they made the wrong decision because it's easier to just tell yourself that it was the other person's fault or that you had no choice, you were backed into a corner and deny that that was your full yeah. choice. I mean, that's, this, I don't know who I was, somebody was making a, a, a video about this recently saying that like a, a large, like a large percent of the women who get divorced, it's because their friends egg them on to do it. Probably a factor. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And to, uh, female jealousy or whatever is probably a factor in the way that those friends act around each other. Yeah. Um, so Samantha Lee said she was emotionally intoxicated and that she failed to seek counsel from any pro-marriage friends. At the time that she well, yeah, because because likely she divorce. was likely she was upset and she was seeking validation from people whose opinions uh, reinforced what she already believed. Yeah, she didn't want to hear the opposite of that. I just this is why I say there's such a broken idea of female friendship these days because it's just celebrating everything that your female friend does, or else you're not a girl's girl. Yeah. Whereas if you actually love and care about someone and they're going down the wrong path, they're making some kind of mistake or, or oversight, you better call it out. Mm-hmm. And if they reject you as a friend for it, then you at least have the peace of mind at the end of the day that you said the truth to them when no one else would. Yeah, Fe- That concept of female friendship or just friendship in general is so lost now because you're just supposed to clap like a seal for everything your friends do. And especially for women, this is the case. Likely could be elements of jealousy there, too, if the... Happy Did they want to swoop yeah. in and grab yeah. Tyrese from her? Is hey, that what know. they wanted? He's in the middle of suing Home Depot. He might not have the extra. He's income. busy, man. He's busy. He's got. He's stuff in to multiple do. legal battles now. He's got to get all this stuff figured <laughs> out. I will say it is difficult for me personally to lay down any type of like strong. As hard as it is for me to lay down strong opinions on most of the stuff in general, it's even harder on stories like this because so much of it is interpersonal. And every single thing that you see revealed to the public, whether it's from Jada Pinkett Smith, whether it's from Britney Spears, whether it's from Tyrese, poor Tyrese Gibson's wife, who I don't even know the name of. Samantha Lee. She's just Tyrese Gibson's wife. All right, we'll just call her that. The point is that you're going to get cherry picked information from both sides about what actually happened in these situations. We're never going to be privy to the whole story, which makes it very hard for me to take a strong stance one way or the other on whether any of these people are good guys. Yeah. I, I can say pretty confidently that Jada Pinkett Smith isn't a good person. But other than that, I can't really make a strong guess. statement other, otherwise because you don't really know. That's All why of this like, stuff is interpersonal relationships are messy and they're not easy to figure out. The subreddit, Am I the A-hole, mm-hmm. is literally just a bunch of people justifying to themselves yeah. why they were a-holes because <laughs> uh, you're not going to truthfully tell your side of the story the fit nerd says you're tyrese not a reliable gibson, narrator t- the fit nerd says tyrese gibson is suing my employer yes if you work for home depot he's suing your employer yes because they did a racism on him he's personally attacking you yes if you work at home depot <laughs> all right let's go to super okay. chats 
Andrew Jacobs said, hi, Mary, welcome back and congrats on your de facto whatever co-host gig, but please don't quit your day job. Question, how do you take your coffee? How do you take your coffee? The question is not how, but when. Before 11 a.m. from McDonald's. It's got to be before 11 a.m. from McDonald's. <laughs> As always. As always. Um, yeah, but like iced. No cream, no sugar. That's how it is. Micah Heglin. Oh, sorry. I already read that one. I see Wells said, Brett, take off your shirt. Um, that's is this gonna, like normal That's now? gonna cost you way extra. Were they just like paying you to take your clothes off while basically, I was gone? Yeah, basically. This was like- This it was became like normal? It was like Caligula in here. So let's do All one right. more. Shane H. Wilder said, craziest homeless person sign I ever saw said, I'll <laughs> be slap your wife for a dollar, WTF? <laughs> Don't even know what I-, I you, Who would pay a homeless person to slap their wife Somebody who's them. very unhappy in their relationship. But they just want uh, someone no, else Will to be Smith. blamed? Will Smith would do that. <laughs> Will Smith would be like, look, I don't have the courage to do it myself. I'm going to need this homeless guy down the block to do it for me. <laughs> uh, Let's hold off on the rest and we'll come back after yeah, the fact. Like maybe, maybe Will Smith will be so miserable in his marriage, he's going to try to pull an Angelina Jolie and put a hit out on himself. <laughs> The world is so crazy. What was that about? I don't, I don't, we don't <laughs> remember we might, when we Maybe we can do like that. a deep dive into that. We need to way. actually investigate. Yeah. Anyways. Uh, let's talk about Rachel Zegler. <laughs> Rachel Zegler is at it again, and she hasn't been doing a lot of press recently because of the SAG strike. So there's been, a, thankfully, a drought of her making public comments. I mean, not thankful for us. Yeah, but we love when we have a little bit of uh, stuff to talk about from Rachel Zegler, because it's always bad. And uh, this time, The Wrap put together a long list of Latino actors and actresses. It's called their Latino Power List. Yeah. On it is uh, Jenna Ortega, also. Ma Mario Lopez, who Mario is, Lopez. who's got Ava Longoria. staying power, my friend. Is Anna de Armas on here? I did not see Anna de Armas. Is Anya Taylor-Joy on here? I saw, I saw John Leguizamo is on here. Anya Taylor-Joy better Oscar be Isaac, on there. Selma Hayek. Okay. Harvey Guillen. Cool, cool, Selena cool. Gomez. America Ferrera. They were they were like they're like iffy on America Ferrera, then she gave that speech in Barbie and they're like, put her on. Got it. Uh, so Ariana here are um, Rachel Zegler's comments for this feature. It's an honor to be recognized in a way that both celebrates our heritage and lifts up the contributions we all make to this industry, where it can be particularly hard for us to be seen and heard in a meaningful way. What does any of this mean? It uh, just, it's just I word point salad. Out, I want to point out that the person above her on the list is Danny Trejo, who's been famous in Hollywood for like <laughs> a gazillion years. Mm -hmm. Like, so I don't know what you mean by difficult to hear in a meaningful way. Well, but... because she's so young, she's going to be like thinking I'm the first to do it. <laughs> well, we, as we know, Jennifer she's Lawrence. She's a trailblazer. Jennifer Lawrence was the first action star. Exactly. So. Uh, quote, I still don't think I'm quite ready for the life I already have, despite being ex extremely grateful for it and for every opportunity it has brought me. Uh, Snow White has drawn its fair share of controversy in a similar way to Holly Bailey's casting in The Little Mermaid, but to see a new generation of young girls see a Latina actress in the role will be revolutionary. I want to I wanna point uh, out, uh, in the chat, Tacti Platy says, honestly, just happy they aren't calling us Latinx. There is plenty of Latinx in this article. Actually. Yeah, there are a lot of Latinxes. Um, from Jenna Ortega herself, she yes. calls them Latinx. So here's what Rachel Zegler says. To young Latino performers coming up in the industry, I would tell them to know their worth and to make sure they are loud about having seats at the tables they deserve to be at. I have learned the hard way that we have to be fearless and loud in order to be heard and to prepare for the backlash that occasionally comes with that outspokenness. Well, here's the, I, let's go through the statement a little bit one at a time. The problem is having seats at the table they deserve is innocuous and doesn't actually mean anything because what like- What who, tables, who is, like you're not an executive, you're talent. And, and deserve is like, you've made two movies, both of which have lost money. What when is you deserve? deserve it is when you're someone like Jenna Ortega, where you had this extremely successful season of Wednesday and you earned Earned a seat at the table and, as and one the of the executive and producers, the franchise. like and and scream. And she's been other other stuff as another well. Another person well, listed in this article. Rachel is Zegler Jennifer... hasn't 
been in profitable movies yet. <laughs> Another person listed in this article is Jennifer Lopez, who has built herself an incredible empire in Hollywood because she proved many, many moons ago that she could sell records. And even unless she's in the movie The Mother, she can act if she needs to. Mm -hmm. Right. That's that's not somebody who didn't earn her seat at the table. And yet she still she gets ragged on for her bad choices in men, apparently, uh, or her, her failed marriages. But nobody's saying that she's not that she doesn't deserve to be where she was in Hollywood. I think people will just do anything to not acknowledge that respect is earned and not just given to you in life. And, and we got a twenty dollar one at the end quick. of the day before um, you do it. What she fails at more than anything is the she doesn't have the ability to phrase or frame anything in a way that wins you fans. Yes. At all. None yeah. of it. I mean, I think her only fans are the other chronically online teenage girls. <laughs> so, so KB said, I will only accept Brett taking off his shirt if he's wearing classic Roman armor underneath. Short king, nah, he's our short emperor. I'll have to work on that. What? I'll have to work on that. Another person said Jenna Ortega is going to be in a Beetlejuice too. Yes, yes. Uh, which she, got? Do you think that she's kind of pigeonholing herself a bit, here? A little bit. Um, Like, look, no. Because she was in the X trilogy in Scream in Wednesday. Yeah. It's all very yeah, spirit but Halloween. But that can be very <laughs> lucrative. It can be. That can be very lucrative and, and down the line. Then that actually, if, if she does, if she plays her cards correctly, it allows her to then pivot and then she gets even more pressed just for doing stuff other than that. You know what? They should, they should actually go forward with this Beetlejuice movie where Jenna Ortega is going to be our Winona it's Ryder. Through, it's about halfway but through But Ethan Klein should be Beetlejuice. <laughs> Am I wrong? <laughs> we could do that. Tell me I'm wrong. Uh, like, she, like right now, <laughs> she's um, pigeonholing herself actually isn't going to hurt her because she'll be able to pivot to more, uh, more serious roles down the, like, down the line. I feel like people already take her much more seriously than they do Rachel Zegler. Yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. And the timing of all of this hasn't helped Rachel Zegler because it's going to be even more wait and delay before Snow White comes out and they can't just get it over with already. So she was in uh, Big City Greens, which I've never heard of, which is a cartoon. American Carnage in 2022. I did not you see that. You mean Jenna that. Ortega or Rachel Jenna Zegler? Jenna Ortega. Okay. Um, like, so she, she's... She's pigeonholing herself because they're the most successful of the work she's done, but it's not the only work she's done. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I mean, it's it'll just take a time where eventually one of her other projects will have to be as successful as a Wednesday was. And Beetlejuice will probably not be the hit that they think it's going to be. I'm yeah, well, saying. it's not relevant to Gen Z. And here's, and here's the other thing. So for this, I'm looking through all of these actors, and, and this is the point that I wanted to make. There are tons of actors on this list here who I don't necessarily let, like Zoe Saldana has her her moments where she says kind of silly things. Uh, America well, here's for, I wanted to go through Jenna Ortega's but, response. But the the point is before we get to that is like all of these other actors like it. Okay, John Leguizamo is a perfect example. I think John Leguizamo is a fantastic actor. I can forgive his annoying, stupid comments. I've yet to see yeah. Rachel Zegler. Give me show a performance that makes it easy enough to forget how annoying her comments are. I'm welcome to it when it comes. I just don't know when that will be. I don't know if we're going to get that with. We truly, at the end of the day, don't care whether these actors are super liberal or not because we know that Jenna Ortega has all the same stupid opinions that Rachel Zegler has. All She's just better actors, at handling herself. All of the actors in all of the movies that I that I reviewed this year, save for maybe a few of them, are in that same camp, and that does not stop me from loving those movies, right? But and if loving the, those shows. If Disney's live action Snow White is good, I will not pull any punches about that i will i will like the movie for instance we i, I loved cocaine bear even if elizabeth uh banks, banks is, is annoying yeah. and stupid <laughs> uh who else uh, what else came out this year uh twisted metal um anthony mackie has made his own comments that can be kind of annoying uh, he's i guess he's had some based ones in the past too but uh like all of those things that came out i Emily Blunt uh, in Oppenheimer. All of these people say kind of annoying things from time to time. It Florence Pugh, Florence for sure. Pugh, granted, I didn't actually think she was all that great in the movie. No. But in general, I don't have a problem with an actor saying annoying things if they're going to give good performances. But Rachel Zegler actually pushes the limit of that, like when you look at the Jeremy Renner stuff. 
from yeah, 2019. I didn't know that she had this long-standing rift with yeah. Jeremy Renner. Um, I guess during the time when he was in a custody battle with his ex-wife, Rachel Zegler decided to start uh, with the Twitter fingers again. And in October 2019, tweeted, Can I be the new Hawkeye? Actually, I think the new Hawkeye should be a trans woman of color to stick it to that racist, sexist, transphobic garbage monster, the, the Jeremy funny, Renner. The other funny thing about it is we went and looked up because I was like, I, I didn't know that. We were like, is I Jeremy didn't know Jeremy Renner, Renner a monster. Was... And there was nothing. And, and there was comments that okay. went back to 2012. He said the N word in an interview in reference to it being bad to say the N word. Like Papa John. He said. He used uh, a slur Annie. for... He it used rhymes a, with Annie about transgender In 2012 or 2015. And then he called... He called Black Widow a slut. And, and, and Chris Evans did and Chris too. Evans and Chris Evans thought it was funny. And then funny. Chris Evans was pathetic enough to actually apologize for it. But, uh, but aside from this, I have no idea why Rachel Zegler thinks he is ableist against deaf people. Here's her last tweet. And deaf, proper representation for the incredible deaf, hard of hearing community. A deaf trans woman of color, yes. As, as a, a new Hawkeye. As a member of the hard of hearing community, I uh, I feel seen. Do you? I do. I feel You very should be seen. the next Hawkeye. I should. I should be the next Hawkeye. I feel yeah. very seen. And then right um, somebody responded to her at the time You need to learn the facts before you start running your damn mouth. Turns out most of the story is BS. She responded, not even remotely going to address the story that came out today, but he has made racist, sexist, transphobic comments and totally disrespected the deaf community. He's Better catch my mouth, cause she running. Bye. She is one of the most unlikable people I've ever you seen. You can just feel the snark seeping through your phone screen when you read that. Um, but I couldn't find anything of him even allegedly being against deaf people since you said that he grew up he's, partially he's deaf. Hard, he's hard of hearing, I guess, as well. Hard of hearing. Uh, and she also says, do not make fun of pronouns. They that was are, during her whole yeah. rift with Gina Carano. They are not a joke. Pronouns are validating. Pronouns are cool. Put your pronouns in your bio. Mm. I wear my pronouns on a button sometimes. It's a good thing. Bye. This is like when Greta Thunberg said her toy octopus helps her express her feelings with her autism. Yeah. Like, you don't need a button to tell people what gender you are. I'm sorry. Yep. And you don't need a reversible octopus to tell people whether you're happy or sad. It's uh, it's absolutely insane. Like, I, I just, I've never met somebody who's so good at not being likable. It's kind of shocking. Uh, 20 years ago, she might have been very successful because she would have been, she would have She had wouldn't a have handler. had a medium like this. Yeah, she would have had a handler. Uh, she, I mean, she's a beautiful woman. She's, she's beautiful. I can't speak to how talented she is as an actress, but she's a beautiful woman and she would have fit right in in Hollywood. Uh, and I just imagine that if she'd had the right public publicist and the right manager. Uh, in her she, eyes, Hollywood has been so racist up until 2017 or something that she would have never been considered for any roles up until now. Except for Jennifer Lopez was successful back in the early 2000s. Except for the people that did it before except you. Except for yeah. all of those people that were on that list. That I mean, it's the same kind of um, uh, narcissism that uh, of Jennifer Lawrence saying that she was the first action hero, right? Mario Lopez, I guess he, 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 he's not, he doesn't count because he's a guy. Is that what they're saying? Like Mario Lopez and John Leguizamo weren't successful or were successful because they were men. Because they they had male privilege. But what about Jennifer Lopez? But what about Rita Moreno? But what about Pedro Pascal? But what about all of the... Well, Zoe Saldana's been around for a hot minute. Like, what are there you talking were, like, about? There were a lot of old Hollywood stars that were Hispanic and then we just never realized because they had more anglicized stage names. I still laugh at the fact that James Roday added Rodriguez on to the end of his name. Yeah. Like last two years ago or three years ago. Still uh, a good, he's still a good talent though. Like it Psych doesn't matter. Psych is still fantastic. It doesn't matter to me. Everyone oh. still loves Psych. It doesn't um, matter. Here were Jenna Ortega's comments because she's often juxtaposed with Rachel Zegler as a Gen Z Latina actress and People see her as, you know, the based one, but she's just as much of a raging liberal. 
Quote, Wednesday is technically a Latina character, and that's never been represented. Oh, the chat is right. Rosie Any... Perez. Rosie Perez yeah. was successful way long time ago. Anytime that I have an opportunity to represent my community, I want that to be seen. I feel like the Latinx community, first of all, are not often shown on camera in general, but they're also oftentimes not shown in a positive light. I never want to play a maid, and I never want to play a cartel leader's daughter. Okay. I would much rather play a person of power. Here's the problem. The, th this is where they're actually short, uh, shortchanging themselves. People laugh at the fact that they make the, the evil white businessman, but that's because that's the, the, the mm -hmm. white people don't complain because that's a fun role to play. They want to play the bad guy because actors used to love playing the bad guy. A white businessman who's not an evil CEO is a lot less interesting than an evil white CEO who's some, or some CIA director who's a bad guy, just as a, a, a random... Hispanic uh, or Latino person is not as interesting. A guy who works at the the corner store or a guy who has a job at a bank is not as interesting as a guy who runs a drug cartel. Obviously. That's just yeah. the way the world works. You're in the realm of storytelling. You don't tell stories of boring people. That's no, it's she not also fun. Ki She kind of made that shady comment um, about any like Latina who does play those those roles, right? Yeah. Like implying that it's somehow demeaning. There's a twenty dollars super chat here from the manic mustache. Says apropos to literature, hopefully there is someone from uh, there is someone for my literary work. It's called the mustache otaku, the man, the mustache, and the treehouse, and the treehouse that held the dreams. Sorry, it's it's. Scrolling side to side here. I'm going to read that one more time through. The mustache otaku. The man, the mustache, and the treehouse that held the dreams. Subtitle's a little long, but your mom liked it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, that's that's very mean. It's very mean. The end there. Is this on Amazon? Is yeah. it competing with the memoirs? You should, yeah, if right we can now? get you to outsell. Uh, <laughs> what's her name? Oh, also, um, in 2018, Jenna Ortega visited a facility for undocumented children separated from their parents, wearing a jacket that said, I do care, and you should too, as a way to hit back at Melania Trump's infamous jacket that said, I don't care, do you? Uh, dude, I'm loving the chat right now. They are just spamming with all of these successful Latinos. You, like, the list is never ending. Yes, it's it's freaking awesome. But I mean, it's not really these young people's fault if they are told no, their, it is. their whole career that they're the first to break these glass ceilings. No, it's still, it's. I still think it's their fault. I think it's like when we make public statements, like uh, there are plenty of times where I say something and I'm like, I have to make sure that what I said, at the very least, if it's not an opinion, that it's, if I get something wrong, I need to be aware of it, right? Like, you shouldn't just say these things willy-nilly and then just expect the rest of the world to delude themselves into believing it, as, especially for the sake of your vanity. Mm -hmm. That's gross. I suppose so. But, I mean, it is the rest of their industry telling them this. Somebody says Che Guevara. <laughs> Carlos Mencia. Hey, Justin Trudeau is a, a Latinx. There's just look. I, I think more Cuban. than anything, snark is the like is the one thing that can really ruin it for me more than anything else. I hate snark. It's disingenuous. Mm -hmm. It's cruel. the the bye yeah. thing. It's disingenuous yeah. and it's awful, and it's not the type of thing that wins you fans from any person who's looking to honestly engage with you that doesn't already agree with I you mean, wholeheartedly. Even snark on its own, I can put up with that. But snark mixed with moral grandstanding yeah. on the basis of like racial power hierarchies you've lost me yeah and all of this in the movie is a year out from it's a least, long way away it's, it's gonna be it's gonna be a while so it's just she she doesn't win herself any favors like imagine the type of thing that you could do if <clears throat> you use that blurb to express gratitude thank you thank you i'm not gonna get used to it you're not gonna what I can add to it. But the point is like, imagine the the um the benefit when you instill a bit of gratitude in your words, right? Like even with Well, the, I mean Rachel Zegler words, did that. Yeah, but I'm saying, but even with that, you have to add the bit at the end there. 
Like, all I'm looking for is a little bit... It's why I always point out the, the fact that I hated when they would do the, the mean tweets and then the celebrity would clap back. Nobody wants to see celebrities, rich people, elitists clap back. They want to see them laugh at themselves. Yes. That's what they want. They want to see you show a little bit of humility. Yeah. A little bit of humility goes a long way. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's go to Super Chats. Takti Platy said, Mary... What is WB? Uh, hold on. Let me... Uh, WB stands for something. Okay. Thank you for bringing up... Oh, welcome back. Welcome back. Yeah. Thank you for bringing up the prodigal son when you did. It's what I was thinking. Please join with HCB bullying Brett to marry. Hashtag justice for Mocha. I will not do that because I think it's extremely rude. I do not bully people for not being married if I am not married myself. Also, there will be no justice for Mocha on this podcast, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sorry. There will be no justice for Mocha. Never. Never. Only injustice. <laughs> no justice, no peace. Exactly. Derp Space Nine said, Mary must not know it was Hannah being the bully. You guys are calling her out for it, though. They were, they were, they were both. <laughs> you guys are naming very, her. They were both being very um, uh, insistent that I find myself a wife and settle down. Why do I hear someone talking right now? Am I crazy? Did I, I lose my mind? You're good. I must look really crazy right now because I just heard someone speaking. Okay. Okay. Hiroshima Otaru said, New Dune is woke trash. Welcome back, Mary. Well, How do we know it's woke trash? It's not out yet. I, 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 he's probably referring to the one that came out last year or two years ago. I, I didn't have a problem with oh. it. I enjoyed Wait, why it. Why is it woke? Uh, I didn't take it that way. I watched like half of it. Yeah. I didn't really notice anything. But I'm woke. a big Denis Villeneuve fan. So I like I, a lot of it is like I watched it once. I, I watched half of it in the theaters because Tim left, like walked out. So we had to leave. Because it was so boring. Because he was so boring. <laughs> I, I loved it. I thought it, it was boring too. I, visually, I loved it. So let's do one more. Meh. Nah. Wait, but please it, do explain why you think it's woke because I don't understand that. Ellie Ray said, welcome back, Mary. Just wanted to say thank you for liking the animation that I have made of you and Brett Cooper. All of you guys are such great inspirations. Yeah. Um, well, thank you for super chatting and thank you for making those illustrations. I share that on my Instagram story if any of you guys missed it. And she was talking about it before the show today. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It was so cool. You did such a good job. Um, awesome. It was amazing. Awesome. All right. Let's move on, shall we? Okay. Uh, so recently, the author of Percy Jackson, the book series, went to Variety to talk about the new Disney Plus series that is being developed. And they just recast all of the characters. Some of them were race swapped. And this author fully owns the fact that they look nothing like the characters he wrote about originally. And he thinks you should not only tolerate it, but celebrate the F out of it. And just be so happy <laughs> that the blonde white characters he wrote about years ago are now black. Yeah. Because um, if you don't, you're racist. <laughs> What's funny about these types of stories is um, what they don't seem to realize, or if they do, it just doesn't seem to resonate with them, is that dedication to the source material is what makes it a viable adaptation option. Like mm -hmm. the fact that people are as passionate as they are about something that you wrote is what makes it even financially viable to be turned into something that could make Disney a profit. The problem mm -hmm. becomes when you, the author, you, the person who created it, is who is now, as we've talked about before, when you create art, you release it into the wild. And it is now up to that audience to decide what that means to them. Not just in how they interpret what you make, but how they interpret how it's adapted. What I don't get is the idea that they get to put it out into the world and then control what aspects of the adaptation you get to be upset yeah. or pleased by. Yeah, if Rick Reardon never wanted the physical attributes of his characters to matter then Don't he would have them. never described their physical attributes in the books to begin with. And this isn't just a director or an actor blabbing in an interview about a TV show they're on when they don't know anything about the books. He knows his own novels inside and out. He cares about them and he ought to care about uh, committing them faithfully to the screen. But instead he's attacking his own fans in favor of defending these actors who aren't even directly involved. And uh, this already happened last year in the spring. He made this whole long blog post 
hitting back at the racist trolls and insisting that his character, Annabeth Chase, is the actress, Leah Jeffries, who is black. Annabeth Chase is physically described as a white blonde girl from what I understand in Percy Jackson. I did not read these books, but that's, that's what I've found from researching it just today. So uh, here's what he said to everyone. This post is specifically for those who have a problem with the casting of Leah Jeffries as Annabeth Chase. It's a shame such posts need to be written, but they do. First, let me be clear, I'm speaking here only for myself. These thoughts are mine alone. They do not necessarily reflect the opinions of any part of Disney, the TV show production team, or the Jeffries family. It is also fair to point out, look, look, don't contact these people. Don't, like, leave them alone. No, of leave course. The, leave but the I young mean, actress alone. I feel like nobody was really sending this 13-year-old kid hate mail if about they, her If place. you were, you're not a good person. Of course. Don't do but it. But that's it's, not what was happening, and it's, it's un... It's disingenuous to claim that that's what was happening in the first place. Anyway, he said, uh, the response to the casting of Leah has been overwhelmingly positive and joyous, as it should be. She will be a role model for new generations of girls who will see in her the kind of hero they want to be. That's because they have the same skin color, and that's what's really important. If you have a problem with this casting, take it up with me. You have no one else to blame. He's claiming full responsibility for the casting decisions here. Again, he's an executive producer on this, and I don't buy don't that know. he has 100% control over that. Uh, when you are... That's what he's claiming, at least. So, but he also says, I was quite, quite clear a year ago when we announced our first open casting that we would be following Disney's company policy on yeah. non-discrimination. I noticed that he didn't say, I asked Disney to implement yeah. non-discrimination policy. He said, uh, as strong as Leah is, as much as we've discussed the potential for this kind of reaction and the intense pressure this role will bring, the negative comments she's received online are out of line. They need to stop now. He's putting his foot down to the racist trolls. Again, He's putting them are, in their place. You are making art on a massive scale. <laughs> you do not get to decide what positive or negative feedback comes in. I would love every day to be able to just make this show and have only the nice things get said about me. <laughs> Wouldn't that, like literally like, okay, so yesterday, like um, I'm, I'm done with the show. I'm like, oh, I'm tired. I'm about to start editing. And like the first two comments are just like, the show is unwatchable without Mary. And then the second comment is just like, it, it, but you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. And then, then when I come be back, big boy. first comment: the show is unwatchable with Mary. Be a big boy. <laughs> be a big girl. If you're the if you're this writer, accept the f the fact that people are going to have negative takes about what you have to say and what you're creating. Well, it's really kind of mean spirited to prep this girl to get bullied before it even happens. Mm -hmm. You're instilling her with a victimhood mentality before she even is known to the world for this role. So he continued, some of you have apparently felt offended or exasperated when your objections are called out online as racist. Quote, I'm not racist, you say. It's not racist to want an actor who is accurate to the book's description of the character. Let's examine that statement. You are upset, disappointed, frustrated, and angry because a black actor has been cast to play a character who was described as white in the books. She doesn't look the way I always imagined. Now, they're not mad because she's a black actor. They're mad that yes. she does not look the way they imagined. You're yes. the one who's adding the part about race on there. You refuse to believe her selection could have been based on merit without having seen her play the part. You have prejudged her. Prejudice and decided she must have been hired simply to fill a quota or tick a diversity box. And by the way, these criticisms have come across the political spectrum, right and left. It is not, and it never <laughs> will be, the audience's job to know the talent level of past work for an actor. Yes, no. it yeah. helps if you know, it helps you build a career once people discover that you're a talented actor, but not wanting somebody who doesn't look like a character they, once portray, they want to see portrayed accurately, none of that makes it their responsibility to then go and empathize with the brunt of the work 
that she's done in her career. It's not their job. It's your job to make the product palatable for everyone. He's not doing anything to lessen the backlash that this girl is supposedly getting is really the point here. And he's that, making it worse. And I do feel worse. bad for her. I he's, do making, like he's poisoning the water even more than it already was by writing this suffocating blog post. And none of his explanation in any way makes a desire, like a, a personal desire for an accurate portrayal both in book literature and in physical appearance a bad thing mm -hmm. you don't get to pick what people get excited about when you pick when you bring something from a book to a movie or a television show you get all of it or you get none of it mm -hmm. uh, you feel i must have been coerced brainwashed bribed threatened whatever or as i white male author never would have chosen a black actor for the part of a canonically white girl I'll never get over the fact that they just, they decide what is important. And what I don't isn't. think he was forced or brainwashed in anything. I genuinely believe he is this much of a ideological, an ideologically loyal leftist. And people he, should, this and, was his choice. And not that it needs restating, but as people, if you watch this podcast on a regular basis, know the average race swap does not bother me the way it bothers a lot of other people. It just doesn't. I do get annoyed when they feel like they have to justify themselves. Just do it. And if you picked an actor who does a good, when you put Samuel L. Jackson in there, you put any of these other actors in there that do a fantastic job and people don't complain, it's a lot easier to leave it be. But if you're casting someone knowing that backlash is coming because they don't have any type of portfolio that gives them, like I said, they it's not the audience's job to know everything this person has worked on. It's your job to hire the best person for the role. And if the best person for the role has no past work for anyone to judge, then you better be ready for backlash. It's gonna come. Mm -hmm. It's going to happen. Well, he specifically wanted to age down the actors that were chosen for this because he didn't like how they were older teenagers in the movies that they made. Um, but that was... But why is that? Why is that so important to get right? Right. Not the like, skin color. Exactly. I'm, I'm genuinely asking because I don't care. These are both immutable characteristics. So he's even hitting back on uh, hair color swapping backlash. <laughs> He said uh, about Walker Scoble, who is playing Percy in this TV show, uh, did I care that his hair color is a different color than what is described in the book? Not at all. He just felt like Percy. He's, the, he's building it up. Here's okay. the other thing. When he creates it, he's got that visual image that he's created himself. When somebody's reading something, they have to bring it to life based on what you wrote. Mm-hmm. You're hurting them, not you're, you're not be, you're not hurting yourself. You know these characters like the back of your hand from the they were literally created from your own brain. If somebody's watching this, they have they only have the information that you presented them with. To then say that that information is suddenly not important is silly. Mm -hmm. It's ridiculous. Now, ironically, one of the race swapped characters is played by an actor whose name is Arian. 17-year-old Arian Simadri plays Grover, whose character is a 24-year-old half-human, half-goat. The books say he looks 16. Quote, does he look exactly like I describe him in the book? No, that doesn't matter. And finally, to Annabeth Chase, the daughter of Athena. This is played by the 14-year-old Leah Jeffries. Reardon said, Leah impressed me from the moment I met her. Now again, does she look like Annabeth looks in the books? No. Was that important to me? No. If anything, it was a massive benefit to broaden the cast in terms of representation. So here in his blog post from last year, he claims this had nothing to do with taking a diversity box or filling a quota. And then in 2023, he brazenly admits that this was for representation, not about merit. Yep. So what is the truth? What is the truth, Rick? Uncle Rick, tell us. Mr. Rick, please. It's just like, decide. Decide yep. what, the, what the narrative is and stick with it. But he can't. He can't help himself but just admit what he was really doing there. I just laugh. What his true motivations because were. Because even somebody like me who doesn't care about the race swapping loves to see these people handicap themselves before they even get started like the show is not even close to out yet yeah. they're not even i don't think that it says they're done filming yep. at this point because of the strike 
So uh, you've already poisoned the waters. Well, one of my favorite examples twice. of how you do this better, uh, the show Arrow, the show Arrow, rather than um, rather than race swap Tommy Merlin, and granted this is back in 2012, mm -hmm. rather than race swap Tommy Merlin, Oliver Queen's best friend, they, they introduced the character of John Diggle, his bodyguard. Who is played by Dave uh, Dave Ramsey? Not da not the not financial not guy one. Dave Ramsey. Different David Ramsey, uh, who is black. Everybody loved that character. He eventually became his own, like a superhero in his own right, and they wrote him in, and he became a comic book character after starting out on a comic book show. And there isn't a person alive who dislikes him because of the color of his skin. Somebody might not like the character. I don't know many people that didn't like him because he was always a great check on Oliver. That's how you do it properly. I would rather you introduce new characters and broaden the scope of your adaptation than change these things. Yeah, but I mean, then again, if you want new characters, make a new mm -hmm. IP. You don't mm -hmm. need to adapt everything, beat it to death like this. It's just, uh, it takes away from this thing that was really special to a lot of people that they grew up with. That now you are kicking that. But he's telling you you're a bad person. He's telling you you're a bad person for wanting it to be that way. And I don't even care about Percy Jackson. I don't care. But <laughs> some people do. And that's not wrong. Um, this says, when self-proclaimed purists learned that even that was blonde, Simadri was Indian, Amer Indian American, and Jeffries was black, all hell broke loose. <laughs> and not the kind overseen by Hades. Ugly sentiments poured out from the bleakest corners of the internet when Leah Jeffries' casting was announced in spring of 2022. And that is when he blurted out that awful blog post. Um, but it's too late now for these kids to recover mm -hmm. from that. He ruined it for them, and that's really wrong. Because um, they are just kids. Like, he's worsened the backlash so unnecessarily for them and he's made them think that they're victims before they even have a chance to interact with the people that like this story yeah. and like these characters um so they asked leah jeffries what she thought about this she said it got to me for the quickest second literally like 90 seconds but i know that no matter how many people are going to say bad things it's never going to be true this sounds really weird but i don't blame them those people might not know how to adapt me, no matter who they put in it, I would love it either way because it's just a show. It's not like I fired someone. Uh, Leah said that uh, when they were in the middle of filming, an acting coach printed out hundreds of images of Greek characters inviting the actors to hold on to the pictures they resonated with. And Leah said, none of these people look like me. In their next session, he brought her an image of a dark-skinned woman with long black hair and flames in her eye sockets wearing an intricate golden crown. She went, yeah, that's Athena. That's my mom. From there, the kids were at liberty, liberty to have fun on set. They were not at liberty to have fun on set if you were instantly racializing everything. Like, Yeah, it's like, it's also like, may, maybe this comes from a point of like growing up as a white Westerner in America, but like the no, idea, no, the idea no. that you have to, the idea that you have to physically look like a person um, to identify with them is just kind of crazy to me. I mean, I guess the equivalent would be if there were a Western TV show being made about African mythology yeah. with African characters and a white person was on it. They would never do that, though. But they would never do that because it never goes the other way around, which is why race swapping bothers me so much. It, it is anti-white. It is. Mm -hmm. Diversity is about getting rid of white people. It's not about inclusion. And, I mean, that's just inexcusable to me. It's not about finding the best Sadly, person for the to job. Sadly, to the kids, it'll become about that later. But those kids might not see it that way. Those kids might buy into the lie. Yeah, I mean, they're too young to know better. It's yep. fine. I mean, they're, again, they're literally a, middle schoolers who are too reason. young to know better. It's they're also, getting indoctrinated so early on yeah. that they're going to be foot soldiers for this ideology for life. It's another reason why you should not go and attack them now because it's going to reinforce the perspective that's going to be beat into them later anyways. Mm -hmm. There's no reason to, to attack a 12 or 13-year-old kid because they took a job. Also, at the end of the day, I'm like, look, somebody offers you the job, you take the job. I like, don't feel any type of way about these kids yeah. saying what they said. 
Yeah. Um, they're being asked leading questions. They're being fed a narrative. They don't know any better. They're being isolated from the real world. If you're on, if you're an adult who is playing a character on Rings of Power or on a Star Wars show or a Marvel show or what have you, and you are the one pushing these narratives, yeah, you're going to get pushback. You deserve it. Uh, Explore Serenity in the chat says Sean King is MLK. <laughs> yeah, it shouldn't matter. What are you, a racist? <laughs> okay, let's just go to Super Chats. Let's do it. Rega Tan said, it's been a long time since I catch you guys live. Well, thanks for coming back. Thank you. Shane H. Wilder said, a pastor would not work. Go to a priest. No one is going, it's a demon. Someone call a non-denominational youth minister. LOL. That'd be You're cool. You're right. Somebody should make that satire, though. They just start playing the guitar, Some, singing a worship song. Somebody should do that. Hoping the demon will go away. Let's do Bucky more. Ducky said, I'll take Will is 100% a victim. Just because you can leave and don't, that doesn't mean you are not a victim. Well, I mean, I I, I uh, qualified my <laughs> statement after that and said yes. I I agree. He he may be the, the narrative victim. again. Ha having not been there, he may be the victim. Yes, but it's still he's got to figure it out for himself. The narrative changes really quickly when we start talking about Andrew Tate's alleged victims who could have left if they wanted to. Mm -hmm. But in that situation, I still said that they were responsible for themselves mm -hmm. as adults. Um, bar being literally imprisoned or having your passport taken away from you, you should have some level of accountability for being victimized in a situation like that. So sure, you can be a victim, but like don't rescind your accountability entirely. Nate, um, or sorry, the Shane H. Wilder is the next one. A deaf person could be Hawkeye. After all, it is Hawkeye, not Hawk Ear. I'm sorry, I'll get my coat and see myself out. <laughs> well, thank you, my friend. Will you hear yourself out? Will hear himself out. All right, let's move on, <laughs> uh, shall we? Mary, you should tell us what's going on with Lil RT. This just fills me with such existential dread to talk about, but um, I'm really surprised you hadn't heard about this story yet, Brett. There is a nine-year-old rapper who has just made his debut with a song called 60 Miles. He goes by Lil RT on the internet. His social media is run by his management slash his Mom. own mother. And this song has extremely mature lyrics that I hope any nine-year-old would not have a clue what it means. I don't think he does. It's... Ref it's referring to crimes, gun activity, <laughs> gangs, sex acts. I mean, it's really, truly disgusting yeah. that they fed a, a child these lyrics and he doesn't know what he's saying. He doesn't know the consequences of what he's doing on the internet and that it's out there forever. Um, and there are all of these adults around him cheering it on and he has no guidance. Like, where are the fathers? It's really sad. I laughed when I saw it only because I was so shocked yeah. and it's so absurd that this is where we're at as a culture. And it's not just him. I've seen this. I mean, this is Lil Tay 2.0. This is Bad, Bad Baby 2.0, 3.0. It just keeps happening. There are more and more. Just stop these stage moms. We need like legislation against stage moms at this point. Yeah, I um, it's funny because I, I had to admit at one point, I was like, look, I laughed at the, the mini AOC stuff while understanding completely that you should not and should never use your kids as political mm -hmm. pawns for ideologies they don't understand. So, I mean, we can't really play the video, can no, we? No, we can't. We can't play uh, the three. Uh, should I read the lyrics out? Sure. Uh, I'm going to censor them heavily. Let's, let's go All right. with that. If she ain't sucking beefs. Hold on. I'm, pa I'm pausing it just so I'm going to put the yeah. thing on screen. There you go. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a, a, a WAP Ben Shapiro moment right now. Yeah. If she ain't sucking beep, lil beep, you can get the beep out of my beep. <laughs> Hundred round, hit him with the Glock. Take an effer down. Hundred round beep, we hitting that kill. We going to take him down. Twelve, get behind me. We going to do... 60 effing miles, yeah. And, he's and it goes on old. and on talking about murder, talking about fellatio, and all of these other adult things that I really hope a nine-year-old doesn't 
know about and isn't familiar with but this is not written by him this is not coordinated by him this is a stage mom and a bunch of enabling weird child groomers and i i mean that word so seriously he filmed this music video with all of these adults around him who, who should know better and they should be ashamed of themselves uh, for even fair, participating. i do want to point out that the comments are very much willing to push back on this. I don't know, because when I looked at his Instagram page, I looked at the comments and there are a lot of people making a big joke out of this and they think it's really funny and they think that this is a great way of putting your kid on a path for success. I still saw plenty I can't of people, relate. I still saw plenty of people saying like, this isn't it, shouldn't be Of course, this. yeah. I, I And I would hope that there would be that pushback. Yeah. Um, in the caption of this music video on Instagram, his mom probably wrote, P.S. I'm not promoting child violence. I'm encouraging him to embrace his talent and stay out of trouble so he can actually change his life before it's too late. He is nine years old and this is what he's doing with his life. I would argue it is too late, lady. Uh, like she knows what she's doing though. She's playing dumb, but she knows what she's doing. Um, and I just, whether it is a cultural thing or there is a kid being made into a political activist or a, a child actor against their will, whatever it is, it's all wrong. I'm against it in all of its forms. Oh, the and 11, we, the 11 year old. We see this all the worse. time. The, I also, in the same time as I was researching Lil RT, I saw this 11 year old rapper who made a music video on the roof of a parking garage and he's presumably being fed a conservative message to rap about to be this little mini Tom McDonald. Toby Jim coming in hot. What are we talking about? What is the plot? If you are a Susie, you can't be a Scott. I know it's a doozy, can't be what you're not. Ooh. Yeah, I'm not playing the rest of it because it gets. Well, can you skip the part where he no, says the slur? No, I don't know where it is exactly. I don't want it to play accidentally. The point is. The point is... Okay, go to 37 seconds. We're burning the furnace. Every day a new gender. I post the truth to the youth and you censor. Can't seem to get rid of me, do better. It's 2023 and still there was only two genders. If you want to do this as an adult, whatever. But the kid's so, like 11 years this old. This is from an account called Christian Nightmares. Oh. And the caption says, is This is what indoctrination looks like. And that looks like mini AOC. That looks like Greta Thunberg. That looks like Lil RT. That looks like Lil Tay. That looks like whatever this kid's name is. Whatever your all of it. Are. Stop! Yeah. Stop using your children as as tools for getting online clout. It's disgusting. No political message is this important. Is is more important than your child's future and future career prospects and social life and online footprint. It doesn't belong to you. It's uh it's more, just not more, right. more importantly for the kid in like five years, he's gonna have he's gonna have friends who are gonna be like, Are you ready to die of cringe? And he's gonna be like, Yeah, sure, and then it's gonna be a video of him. And yeah. Then he's like, uh, like, uh, like you're never gonna outlive that. Yeah, there's like, no way to, to delete that. Yeah, like I just I don't I don't support it with, with the kids and the parents and you know, and the parents encouraging it. Mm -hmm. I like I said, I laughed at the mini AOC stuff, but definitely not not good for your kids Don't no do it. it's not um <laughs> i also saw recently that drake is kind of propelling his own six-year-old son into having a future rap career because mm -hmm. he just dropped his first song called my man it's a freestyle rap where he raps about um playing on his ipad and saying hi to his dad get it it rhymes I got it. Yeah. So he dropped this song. Um, being that he's only six years years old, he's not that good at rapping. That's but fine. That's fine. At least the lyrics are age appropriate and not about killing people. Even, even and then, I, I guess. Like, S ing D. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Like, it's just. But even then, it's like, why is this necessary? Why? I, I guess, like, uh, for something like that, if it's if it's age appropriate, is it different than is Drake having his kid learning to rap any different than a, a dad who played baseball teaching his kid to play baseball? Yes, it's different um, because there are millions of people if watching. It's, um, if it's age also lyrics. who's surprised that Drake's son is an iPad child? Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, it's uh, it's it's just weird the way these things have kind of permeated the culture. I'm not a I'm not a huge fan of it for the for the kids, but at the same time, the, is it is it going to be different when he's 16? He's still going to be a kid. He's still going to be a teenager, but he's going to have a lot more little RT. Any of these any of these kids. Mm-hmm. How different will it be at 16 than it is now? It's just a lot of parents have abdicated their responsibility to lead their their children and they want to be friends with their children. Yeah. Like I saw this other video of Lil RT on his Instagram where he looks at this piece of paper and he says like, what the F does this say? I'm only nine years old. And he presumably from that statement can't read at nine years old. So what, is he just not being schooled? I mean, at nine years old, you should be able to read a book, not just a sentence. Yeah. Um, and his mom and this other friend of hers are laughing, like snickering with themselves in the background about this. Like, I don't know, where's like the shame around even using horrible language like that at that age? You're just set up for failure. It's like you never even had a chance in life at that point. Would you, would you, somebody mentioned Justin Bieber. Would you say that like, uh, because Justin Bieber is the, the blueprint of the success of somebody at that age, right? Who was grabbed by a label mm. and then essentially had no childhood. Not at that age though. Cause he only was discovered by Scooter Braun when he was like 13. And okay. then he really only took off at, at the age of like 15. Yes. He was a product. Yeah. But it seemed like his parents just gave a minimal shit about him. You yeah. know what I mean? It's, uh, That's what it seemed like from the outside. I and mean, the, maybe we'll never know. But he also has talked about how painful it was to be a child star. So and I was talking that's about a near universal message of any, people that got famous in, in childhood. Any parent today doesn't have the excuse a parent of yesteryear had where they didn't know how mm -hmm. potentially damaging these industries can be for children. Mm -hmm. Right? Back in the day, they had They're just that. like, my child is my meal ticket. Yeah. 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 It's uh, That's what that mom thinks. And then you get a Britney Spears who ends up extremely broken and extremely damaged. We'll wait for a little and RT's book memoir. <laughs> his uh The Rapper and Me uh. will come out in thirty years and, and you'll find out that all this stuff happened and there is just no understand that I just have no one way of believing that they just don't know that it's going to be extremely damaging to yeah. them so this to then get bought up by a record label. And I hope no record by, label would yeah. take on this liability. I don't know. Uh, one comment said, think about this kid for a minute. He doesn't write these songs alone. He doesn't make the song beats by himself. He doesn't edit his videos. He has a whole team of adults behind him that think this behavior is perfectly the, OK. The, 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 the um, production value on the video was good. So Which this is, is even scarier than not, if it were a home video, right? This because is not something he made in his back uh, like with, just, just with, a, with a phone. Anyone who is even remotely involved with promoting this kid online is bereft of any moral compass. Like, I could never justify that to myself. You know? Yeah, I don't know. I just can't relate to these people. Like, what are your values? If you would ever, ever be involved with this. I mean, is this, how different is this than the dance moms who, who put their kids through pageants at that age? Not very. Like, no, I mean, at least in that situation, they have a talent like gymnastics is a talent. It's a sport. It's still right? there, it, things I, like that. It's a sport that that you can excel at. But this is not a talent. This is just vulgarity. It's just coarsening your child and but forcing them to do adult things and talk about adult things that they don't understand, at least if it's dance, if it's gymnastics or something like that. Yeah, you can push them harder than you ought to. But at least it's something a lot that could these, be beneficial for them. A lot of these comments would be made about like kids who get into like, uh, okay, so I, I played sports for a lot of years, right? And a lot of those kids who, as, as much as I loved it, as, as seriously as I took it, eventually uh, it got replaced with skating. But like a lot of those kids, I mean, they went to camp every summer. They were constantly mm -hmm. being like, how much of it was them wanting to just make their parents happy and how much of it was actually sure. them loving the sport. That, but that's imagine a question that's been going on raising the for, stakes and yeah. putting all of those kids onto a show called Hockey Dads where... I, <laughs> Where it's all about the drama. Honestly, between... that's not. I, I'm surprised that has, I wouldn't be surprised <laughs> if that's already a thing. You know what? If it's not, 
I, I, I'm not going to lie. That would be entertaining. And but, think about Simone, um, Simone Biles. I mean, the gym, a lot of those gymnasts were... A, Pushing your kid into a sport that maybe they're not as interested in yeah. as making you happy is arguably bad. Putting them on a reality show where they're going to be known by the entire country for it for the rest of their lives that's a whole different discussion oh yeah we had a discussion yesterday because we talked about paris hilton have had like photos of her son and everybody was like making fun oh my of her. gosh her son's head is so big <laughs> it's cute though and people, he looks like mega minds and that's, that's what people were saying and people were making fun of her uh, of him and i was like think about that <laughs> it's he's a like, baby he's at an age where he can't consent though Right, like he's to being like, online, to yeah. being on, to have to, even to having pictures of him posted yeah. on the internet, which is why they used to spend so much money to get the first photos of a of a child for these tabloids mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Like at the age we're at now, where your social media presence is important and how you're portrayed is important, you have to start asking that question even from birth. Like, like how much uh, consent are they able to provide when? These types of things get said about you. Might not, 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 yeah, he's too young to know what they're saying about him now, but maybe he goes back 20 years later and like looks up archived stuff and yeah. sees that people were making fun of him. Yeah. That's not They're, good People either. just don't think about the consequences. They think about like, what do people want to see from me today? And yeah. make their kids into accessories for I, that. Do you do you feel I don't like uh, do you feel that that's how she treats her? She seemed I mean she had some pretty choice words for the critics, so I think that uh, she's uh, very much loves her son. What did she say? She's like, look, it's evil what you're doing with the stuff. She said he has a big head. She what's didn't the, even she didn't even say that. What's she, the problem? She just <laughs> called them out for being rude online. He does have a large yeah. head though. But he'll grow into it. Yeah. What's the big deal? Uh, in the in the comment, look, but that's the thing. That's powerful physiognomy. And a lot of people were also pointing out, they're like, she should know better than anyone that what you put out online that is image going to be judged. That image matters, right? She should be, like, did you, like, I don't buy that she's so naive to believe that just because it's a kid that the every person on the internet is going to leave the kid alone. Right. The internet doesn't work like that. The internet's full of evil people. Maybe you can say it should, but it's never going to. Exactly. That's not the reality of the yeah. matter. All right. Super Chats. Yoshima Otaru said a uh, woman. I, I don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, by that? the way, I would love. Oh, uh, I was going to say I'd love a fourth crisis party. I would love a fourth crisis party, guys. Just because Mary seems so uh, um, taken aback by the new sound effect. What is this? Um... I don't know how to pronounce this. I Brett. don't know. Do you know? I don't know what that means. Leia. Leia. Kyan, Kynes has major story implications. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that means. Uh, Shane H. Wilder said, as someone who writes fiction, if I describe a character's attributes, there is a reason. It is how I want the audience to envision them. There you go. Yeah, and like someone's physical attributes have to do with the way that they are perceived in the world, and it has to do with the way their personality is formed. It's not irrelevant entirely. Silly SpongeBob said, what about white people as famous black people? Well, obviously that would never happen because diversity means less white people uh, in reality. <laughs> but it would be funny to see, um, I don't know, Aaron Paul play MLK. No, we're, no, we're gonna have we're gonna have um, Ryan Gosling play Obama. That's still gonna Amazing. happen. Amazing. Hiroshima Otaru said, "As of 2014, race swapping is always political." It was likely always political, even before that. They were just less like there was no social media to make you realize just how political it was to them. Mm -hmm. uh, and you or I had the blessing of being blissfully ignorant to it at the time. Shane H. Wilder said they made that satire. Oh, yeah, it's a character from Dune. It was called yeah. My Best Friend's Exorcism. It sucked. Yeah. Okay. Organizedbusinessservices.com said, Ma Mary, my GF is back. LOL, kidding. I'm not stalking you. Okay. Well, that's good. It's good to um, not be stalked. All right. Shane H. Wilder said, let kids be kids. It's not that hard. Yeah. Uh, at the end of the day, let... So, okay. So, actually, that's an interesting question. If you say, let kids be kids, and the kid says, I want to rap, then what do you do? You say no. You say no. It's like parents don't know this is a concept. Like, you can... You actually do have the power 
to say no to what a kid wants. Oh, Pete Is Tran. This like novel the, concept. Pete Tran in the chat, they're talking about uh, like Brandy as Cinderella. That's really funny because she was coming up. She's in like a new romantic, like a Hallmark type movie right now. I and think Xavier, that Xavier posted yeah. a picture of her and was like, white people do you know who this is and i wrote him oh i'm like uh yeah because uh almost doesn't count and sitting up in my room in moesha and the cinderella movie that i didn't see but everybody loved at that time i still know what you did last summer and all the other ways in which brandy norwood rules I got excited for a second there. I, she she was a cultural icon back then. She was very she was very cool. Well, not to me. Not, not to well, not to pasty crackers like me. <laughs> Brandy ruled. Brandy was awesome, and uh, my, uh, that boy is mine was a fantastic mu music video with her and Monica. So mm. just saying. All right, guys. Uh, <laughs> yes, it was Brandy as Moesha. Uh, guys, before we go, would you hit the like button on this video? Would you subscribe to this channel, please? If you have not done so already, we are on our way to 75,000 subscribers. So go ahead and hit the subscribe button, please. Mary, where can they find you? You can send me validation on Instagram at Mary Archived, and you can send me hate on X. That is also Mary Archived. I did post the links to both of those whatever appearances on X if you want to go watch them. Each are over five hours long, so viewer discretion is advised if you do. Um, and we'll be back tomorrow yeah. with Libby on the show. We have a $20 one off topic, but Mary, what's your opinion on church miracles like the Holy House of Loretto. Are you familiar with that one? I'm not familiar with that one. What is your feeling on... Miracles? Yeah, on church miracles. Um, I mean, the, the church permits us to believe in them if we want to, and we don't have to. Mm -hmm. So um, I've been to d different apparition sites like Knock and to Lourdes. I'm sure I would love to see other ones. I don't really have a specific devotion to any particular like apparition sites or miracles, but I definitely believe they happen. That's a that's a good thing. Um, Yoshima Otaru said Liet Kynes, Connie's father, him being made into a woman for the movie completely changes the dynamics of Freeman society, which Dune is based around. Okay, I yeah. don't know anything. And about for me, like I've Dune. only seen, I've only seen the movies. So and and they, they were not things <laughs> no that idea. I was like. Even when I saw the the movie, I wasn't. I'm not a huge Dune fan. I was not a big Dune franchise fan. I am just a big Denis Villeneuve fan, and the visuals were enough to to do it for me. But I absolutely understand why uh, why people have problems with it. Also, guys, before we go, before we, uh, you did your outro, right? Mm -hmm. Did you do your outro, guys? Would you please go over now? In about 10 minutes, Gamer Maids will be live. They're live now uh, every day at 5 p.m. So go ahead and check out the gaming channel. They did go ahead and launch that yesterday. It looked like they had a lot of fun. So please do that. And if you want to follow me, you can follow me on Instagram and Twix at Brett Dasovic on both of those platforms. Uh, and if you want to follow... Oh, I thought there was another super chat that came in here. It's just delayed. I was wrong. I thought we were going to get the... Oh, no. I, I want the fourth crisis party. We are so very close to a fourth crisis party now. Now I'm going to have to talk very, very slow. Um, guys, five days a week, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That is noon Pacific. If you would like to listen to the audio version of this podcast, we are on Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts, Pandora, and Spotify. And if you want to follow the show on social media, we are on Twix at PopCulture underscore show, Facebook and TikTok at PopCultureCrisis, Instagram at PopCultureCrisisPod. We will be back with another episode tomorrow. We'll see you then, guys. Bye. Bye. Post-credit scene, ladies and gentlemen. I didn't see these hit, had not caught up. We got a twenty-dollar one here from uh, from Le uh, Levi. Says off-topic. Oh, we got that one. No, we got, uh, that. Nomification <laughs> says hi, Brett. Oh, hi, Barry. So finally, they got your name wrong for once, not mine.
Barry. Barry. You're Barry now. Okay. Uh, and one from Derp Space 9 he says, skipping my $5 one. Did I, did I skip one from you? What does it say? He says, uh, the Chinese kids. That did not no, pop up for me. It says, the Chinese kids who make my shoes don't experience confusion. Repeal child labor laws for a brighter tomorrow. <laughs> uh, I and the 19th. Should, and the 19th. Don't uh, forget that part. He was very close, but uh, I we could hang out here till the end of it, till we get a fourth crisis party. But I don't know if anybody's gonna actually make Wait, that let's happen. Wait, let's let's just see who stays, because now we can just we we can just relax. We can just sit here. We don't have to say anything. No, we don't need to say anything. I'll we'll start cleaning mine. There you go. I can just sit here. Clean the money up. Jones. Yeah. <laughs> Trudy Jones makes it happen with $50 with no message. That one gets a like button, ladies and gentlemen. I don't do the, the like button, ladies and gentlemen. And yes, Derp Space Nine says reverse hostage party. Is that what we're, we're, holding, them we're holding them hostage? Now? We took back the power. Olivia Claire said, You guys asked nicely. Mary, you look beautiful as always. Brett, looking nice as well. Have a good day, guys. Thank you, Olivia. You have a good day, too. Thank you. Yes, I'm not hungry today. They're, the, they're, I mentioned on IRL last night that they do the correct, the hostage parties because by the time the end of the show is coming, I'm basically like uh, my blood sugar has essentially like plummeted and I'm slurring my speech way bad and it sounds like I'm drunk, but I'm really just really, really hungry. You kind of can't win because if you eat carbs before the show, you're dumb. If you don't, you're, you're also can't dumb. Win. All right, go. Oh, actually, no, we have to let it go now until they get the actual yeah. party. We'll let it go. Let it go. I, I don't like Frozen. Structure. It's my favorite part. There will be no justice for Mocha. I see you, C2 <laughs> Gaming. There will be no justice for that derpy cat. Two super chats, one from Hiroshima Utaru says, Brett, <laughs> look at me, I run the hostage party now. Yes, I run the hostage party now. And one from Shane H. Wilder, he says, such riveting entertainment. Yes, well, that's us. We're Mr. and Mrs. Anna riveting over here. We're fantastic. Uh, and one from Yesh says, no, he says, no, oh, is there a period there? No justice for Mocha. Take that, you derpy cat. Mary under glass? What? What does that mean? I don't know what that means. Do I have a glass ceiling to break? It's going! Let's, oh, yeah. Probably. I thought the when it went off that time, I thought for sure it was going to um, set up the crisis party. We're giving you guys a lot of bonus content right oh, now. Oh, yeah, they're getting hella bonus content today. <laughs> Uh, Bucky Ducky says, drop a link to get to the gamer thing you mentioned. I just did. It is in the chat, my friend. Derp Space Nine says, cats, the other, other white meat. Why can't we raid people on YouTube? No idea. Can you? Because if that were a, a possibility, we could stream raid gamer maids at the end of the show every day. Yeah. But that's, um, now. well, they're not on Twitch, are they? No, they're on YouTube. I mean, I Twitch would be a good idea for that. Just waiting for that crisis party. Right. Live. Did you read Tacti Platy? Oh, Tacti Platy says, Brett, show Mary the Taco Bell meme I made you. I'll check that later, my friend. I, I, I will show it to her later. Bucky Ducky says, Brett called me his friend. I can die happy. That is not the bar you want to set for yourself, my friend. This could go on forever. They have to have it set up to accept raids. 
I don't know how it works. Evan Perry says it's weird having PCC so so silent. PCC so silent. Wait, we should have our channel set up so that we can accept raids. Can we do that on YouTube? I never heard of it, but if it is a thing, we should. If Mary smoke a blunt, I'll do a fifty dollar chat. I don't smoke blunts. <laughs> I don't smoke weeds. In general. I don't smoke the weeds, she says. It is unbelievably difficult to stay silent knowing that we're live. I feel very at ease right now. Which is funny because when we're during the day, I mean, you can go an hour without talking. Yeah. But like when the camera's on. <clears throat> Dirtface9 I mean, says, hey, Brett, you should do a collab with the Gamer Maids and expose them to some awesome retro games like Cla Castlevania on the NES. By the way, your top three. Uh, I don't have a favorite three. If we're talking, it depends on the system we're talking. Uh, if we're talking like just retro games in general. If any of you guys are gamer maids subscribers, please go in their chat and tell Sarah Noble to uh, guest on PCC at some point. Yes, you should tell been, her to be on our show. It's been such uh, such a difficult process trying to convince her to do it. Now she's on camera, so what's, what excuse does she really have? Levi says, do you guys game? I do not game modern. I play old, uh, I play vintage video games. Right now, uh, I've been going through and replaying uh, WCW versus NWO Revenge. I, old, I love old wrestling games like that. Uh, uh, oh. And uh, the old Smackdowns from like uh, 2006, 2007 for PlayStation 2. Um, and I don't have the time to do any of it. Was that Levi? Yep. Courier626 said, get you some T Bell. I do want some too. So I just want I've some. Had that's, I want some much. that's not, um, that doesn't have sour cream. <laughs> Otis Crinkle said, what is y'all's favorite flavor of seltzer water? <laughs> Mine is jalapeno. That's gross. That's disgusting. I didn't know that was even a thing. I'll just stick with plain this water. This is lemon lime, but I kind of like when it doesn't have a flavor at all. Mm -hmm. Nomification sent two hundred, uh, two hundred of something. Mm. I don't know what currency it is. I don't know what that is. is. I don't know and that no is. message. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, we're almost at a fifth crisis party. You guys could make that happen yeah. any minute now. <laughs> we should probably just wait that one out. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'll wait for the fifth um, crisis party. I'm, I'm totally happy to, to wait. Uh, but uh, also, I see Andrina says WCW versus NWO. I totally talked about that yesterday. What? Yes, but everyone knows that WWF No Mercy was the clearly superior N64 game. By far. Mm. Uh, I don't go uh, in the chat. I don't go back to Atari. I do. Like, I love Blades of Steel. I love Contra. But I haven't played in years because I just don't have a lot of time. I should game, but by the time I'm done with work, I'm basically passing out anyways. So... It's, also, I feel like if I did, I would then start playing too much, and then I would come into work and be even more tired than I normally am, and Mary would be like, you're useless, because you were up till 7 a.m. rather than 4 a.m. playing video games. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't be good. Derpspace9 says, old scrollers are legit. Been playing Super Mario World with my eight-year-old eight nephew. That's awesome. Yeah. And also, everyone knows those games were like the hardest to, to beat. Oh, I am so tired. Oh, I also, I also love Streets of Rage for Sega. A lot. Someone said bring a whatever podcast panel on PCC. That would be amazingly awful. Difficult. Hell. <laughs> is there what other adjectives you, do you want? Is there anybody you would bring on? <laughs> From whatever? Yeah. I mean, Brian, the host, yeah. would be uh, an option if he had any free time. We are... Six dollars away from a crisis party. Six dollars. We could just do this. This is easy. Forever. This is way easier than actually talking about stuff and like knowing things. Dude, having, having an opinion sucks. Like, okay, I'm look, this is the vision I had for episode 400. And although that stream was an extremely long one. Yep. 
we could have just chilled. We could have just chilled and, and not really planned it for the most part. I think. I, know, man. I think. I think the you, viewership would have tanked. Like right you, now, uh, we've lost like a t people are like, why am I watching these people? They're just yammering. They're yeah. just yammering on. They're not even wearing their headphones, Brett. Put your headphones on. Well, let's start gossiping about other influencers. <laughs> <laughs> let's start gossiping. I'm telling you, the the, the best channel this could ever been have been some type of weird conservative if tim gossip knew channel. what was really going to be successful on youtube yeah. it would be a, a right-wing drama Did you hear what gossip channel Se so and so said about so and so uh we did you got... see what she subtweeted about charlie kirk oh my goodness uh, <laughs> i voltage 75 says welcome back maddie oh hi brant maddie Serenko production says see y'all at gamer maids <laughs> Great job, Brett and Mary. Uh, Kyle Bose said, uh, check out Panderverse tomorrow. I wonder if that'll be on streaming or if I'm going to have to watch that live. Uh, let's see. We got some more. Uh, Beanbag Actual, $10 with no message. Thank you, my friend. Jspot51 says, there's an old NES game called Pro Wrestling. I also like Mike Tyson's punch out. Uh, Bucky Ducky says, Brian was painfully bad at debating in the last one. Was he? Was he bad in the last one? I think that sometimes he needs to focus less on debating and, and more on directing people yep. what to talk about. Yep. Oh, I got a, okay, Levi says $2 without a message. Nomification says far, uh, says, uh, far too few house last episodes. Are you a real house fan number three? Uh, I'm, I'm not a fan of season seven, man. So uh, season seven or eight. So um, what sort of... Thank you. Uh, I'm assuming he doesn't mean un. Uh, was he shooting when they picking him up in season in episode 13 and season seven? Was that the one where he's shooting um, uh, clay pigeons. I feel like he was shooting clay pigeons, but I could be wrong about that. Those last two seasons are are rough. I do, however, have a controversial statement. I do believe season three is better than season two because Sella Ward ruins the first half of season two because they had literally zero chemistry. That's just me. Uh, DC and C says, is Brian autistic as heck? No, he's a normal guy. Normal person? Okay. I think doing five-hour streams would oh, yeah. kill any, any man. <laughs> anybody will... Uh, and woman. And woman. No. Think, think women got uh, stronger stamina in the podcast arena? Uh, that's a controversial take. Okay, that's not what I said. <laughs> I wouldn't like to be in his position either. Uh, like, especially if you have to, like... If you're, like, uh, steering the ship and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, I'm sure he's got... Uh, when he's done, he's like, ugh. I need to go to bed. That got really tense at certain points. What was so tense about it? Um, <laughs> he just lets people punch it, or no, what is it? Push his buttons too much when they want to get to him. Mm -hmm. Does it so, get to him? Uh, yeah. Does it? Oh yeah. yeah. He he like yeah. He was a, a little bit testy. DC and C says, guys, you can defo set up your YouTube live stream to redirect everyone to Gamer Maids. Just need a link from them. How? Oh, okay. All right, guys. Uh, I want to thank everyone for getting us those crisis parties at the end there. Mary still seems to not like the new crisis party sound effect. I think it's fantastic. Whatever. I don't care. Uh, guys, we will be back with another episode tomorrow. We'll see you then. Later, everybody.